The Sibylline Oracles Translated from the Greek into English blank verse by Milton S. Terry Narrated by Matthew Schmitz Book 1 Beginning with the generation first of mortal men, down to the very last, I'll prophesy each thing, what erst has been, and what is now, and what shall yet befall the world through the impiety of men. First now God urges on me to relate truly how into being came the world. And thou, shrewd mortal, prudently make known, lest ever thou shouldest my commands neglect the King Most High, who brought into existence the whole world, saying, Let there be, and there was. For he the earth established, placing it round the Tartarus, and he himself gave the sweet light. He raised the heaven on high, spread out the gleaming sea, and crowned the sky with an abundance of bright shining stars, and decked the earth with plants, and mingled sea with rivers, and the air with zephyrs mixed and watery clouds. And then, another race appointing, he gave fishes to the seas, and birds unto the winds, and to the woods, the beasts of shaggy neck, and snakes that crawl, and all things which now on the earth appear. These by his word he made, and everything was speedily and with precision done, for he was self-caused, and from heaven looked down, and finished was the world exceeding well. And then thereafter fashioned he again a living product, copying a new man from his own image, beautiful, divine, and bade him in ambrosial garden dwell, that labors beautiful might be his care. But in that fertile field of paradise he longed for conversation, being alone, and prayed that he might see another form such as he had. And forthwith, from man's side taking a bone, God himself made fair Eve a wedded spouse, and in that paradise gave her to dwell with him. And when he gazed upon her, on a sudden filled with joy, great admiration held his soul. He saw a pattern so exact, and with wise words, spontaneous flowing answered, he in turn for God had care for all things. For the mind they darkened not with passion, nor concealed their nakedness, but with hearts far from evil. Even like wild beasts they walked with limbs exposed, and afterwards, delivering them commands, God showed them not to touch a certain tree. But the dread serpent drew them off by guile, to go away unto the fate of death, and to gain knowledge of both good and evil. But the wife, then first traitress, proved to God. She gave and urged the unknowing man to sin, and he, persuaded by the woman's words, forgot the immortal Maker utterly, and treated plain commandments with neglect. Therefore, instead of good, received they evil according to their deed. And then, the leaves of the sweet fig tree piercing, they made clothes and put them on each other, and concealed the sexual parts, because they were ashamed. But on them the immortal set his wrath and cast them out of the immortal land. For their abiding now in mortal land was brought to pass since hearing they kept not the word of the immortal mighty God. And straightway they, upon the fruitful soil forthgoing, with their tears and groans were wet. And to them, then the immortal God himself, a word more excellent spoke. Multiply, increase, work constantly upon the earth, that with the sweat of labor ye may have sufficient food. Thus he spoke, and he made the author of deceit to press the ground on belly and on side, a crawling snake, driving him out severely. And he sent dire enmity between them and the one is on the lookout to preserve his head. But man his heel, for death is neighbor near of evil plotting vipers and of men. And then indeed the race was multiplied, as the Almighty himself gave command, and there grew up one people on another, innumerable, and houses they adorned of all kinds, and made cities, and their walls well and expertly, and to them was given a day of long time, for a life much loved, for they did not worn out with troubles die, 
but as subdued by sleep. Most happy men of great heart, whom the immortal Savior loved, the King, God. But they also did transgress, smitten with folly. For with impudence they mocked their fathers and their mothers scorned. Kinsmen they knew not, and they formed intrigues against their brothers. And they were impure, having defiled themselves with human gore, and they made wars. And then upon them came the last calamity set forth from heaven, which snatched the dreadful men away from life, and Hades then received them. It was called Hades, since Adam, having tasted death, went first, and earth encompassed him around. And therefore all men born upon the earth are in abodes of Hades called to go. But even in Hades, all these when they came had honor, since they were the earliest race. But when Hades received these, secondly of the surviving and most righteous men, God formed another very subtle race that cared for lovely works and noble toils, distinguished reverence and solid wisdom, and they were trained in arts of every kind, finding inventions by their lack of means. And one devised to till the land with plows, and another worked in wood, another cared for sailing, and another watched the stars and practiced augury with winged fowls, and use of drugs had interest for one, while for another magic had a charm, and others were in every other art, which men care for instructed, wide awake, industrious, worthy of that eponym, because they had a sleepless mind within, and a huge body, stout with mighty form they were. But notwithstanding, down they went into Tartarian chamber terrible, kept in firm chains to pay full penalty in Guiana of strong, furious, quenchless fire. And after these a third strong-minded race appeared, a race of overbearing men, and terrible, who wrought among themselves many an evil. And fights, homicides, and battles did continually destroy those men possessed of overweening heart. And from these afterward, another race proceeded, late completed, youngest born, blood-stained, perverse in counsel. Of men these were in the fourth race, much the blood they spilled. Nor feared they God, nor had regard for men, for maddening wrath and sore impiety were set upon them. And wars, homicides, and battles sent some into Erebus, since they were overweening impious men. But the rest did the heavenly God himself in anger afterwards change from his world, casting them into mighty Tartarus, down under the foundation of the earth. And later, yet another race, much worse, of men he made, to whom no good thereafter the immortal formed, since they wrought many evils. For they were much more violent than those, giants perverse, foul language pouring out, single among all men, most just and true, was the most faithful Noah, full of care for the noblest works, and to him God himself from heaven thus spoke, Noah, be of good cheer in thyself, and to all the people preach repentance, so that they may all be saved. But if, with shameless soul, they heed me not, the whole race I will utterly destroy with mighty floods of waters. Quickly now, an undecaying house I bid thee frame of planks strong and impervious to the wet. I will put understanding in thy heart, and subtle skill and rule of measurement and order. And for all things will I care that thou be saved, and all who dwell with thee. And I am he who is, and in thy heart do thou discern. I clothe me with the heaven, and cast the sea around me, and for me earth is a footstool, and the air is poured around my body, and on every side around me runs the chorus of the stars. Nine letters have I, of four syllables I am. Discern me. The first three have each two letters, the remaining one, the rest, and five are mates, and of the entire sum, the hundreds are twice eight and thrice three tens, along with seven. Now, knowing who I am, be thou not uninitiated in my lore. Thus he spoke, and great trembling seized on him at what he learned, and then within his mind, having contrived each matter, he besought the people and began with words like these, O men, insatiate, 
Smite with madness great, whatever things ye practiced, they shall not escape God's notice. For he knows all things, immortal Savior overseeing all, who bade me warn you that ye perish not. Be sober, cut off badness, do not fight perforce each other with blood-guilty heart, nor irrigate much land with human gore. Revere, O mortals, the supremely great and fearless heavenly Creator, God imperishable, whose dwelling is the sky. And do ye all entreat him, he is kind, for life of cities and of all the world, and of four-footed beasts and flying fowls, entreat him to be gracious unto all. For when the whole unbounded world of men shall be destroyed by waters loud, ye'll raise a fearful cry, and suddenly for you the air shall be disordered, and from heaven the fury of the mighty God shall come upon you. And it certainly shall be that the immortal Savior against men will send wrath if ye do not placate God, and from this time repent. And nothing more fretful and evil lawlessly shall ye one to another do, but let there be a guarding of one's self by holy life. But when they heard him, each turned up his nose, calling him mad, a frenzy-smitten man. And then again did Noah sound his strain, O men exceeding wretched, base in heart, unstable, leaving modesty behind and loving shamelessness, rapacious lords, fierce sinners, false, insatiate, mischievous, in nothing true, stealthy adulterers, flippant in language, pouring forth foul words. The wrath of God Most High, not fearing, kept to the fifth generation to atone. In no way do ye wail, harsh men, but laugh. Sardonic smile shall ye laugh. When shall come that which I speak, God's dire incoming flood, when Eve's polluted race in the great earth blooming perennial in impervious stem shall root and branch in one night disappear, and cities, men and all, shall the earth shaker from the depths scatter and their walls destroy. And then the whole world of unnumbered men shall die. But how shall I weep how lament in wooden house, how mingle tears with waves. For if this water bidden of God shall come, earth shall float, hills float, and even sky shall float. Everything shall be water, and all things shall be destroyed by waters. And the winds shall stand still, and a second age shall come. O Phrygia, thou shalt from the water's crest first rise up, and thou first another race of men shalt nourish, once again a new beginning, and thou shalt be nurse for all. But when now to the lawless generation he had thus vainly spoken, the Most High appeared and once more cried aloud and said, The time is now come, Noah, to proclaim each thing, even all which I that day to thee did promise and confirm, and to complete, because of a people disobedient throughout the boundless world, even all the things which generations of a former time did practice, evil things innumerable. But do thou quickly enter with thy sons and the wives. Call as many as I bid of tribes of beasts and creeping things and birds, and in as many as I ordain for life will I then put a willingness to go. Thus spoke he. Forth went Noah, and aloud cried out and called, and then wife, sons, and brides entered the house of wood, and also went the other things, as many as God willed, to shut in. But one fitting bolt was put about the lid, and in its polished place was fitted sideways, then was brought to pass forthwith the purpose of the God of heaven. And he massed clouds, and bid the sun's bright disk, and moon and stars, and circle of the heaven, obscuring all things round. He thundered loud, terror of mortals, sending lightnings forth. And all the winds together were aroused, and all the veins of water were unloosed, by opening of great cataracts from heaven, and from earth's caverns and the tireless deep appeared the myriad waters, and the whole illimitable earth was covered over. But on the water swam that wondrous house, and torn by many furious waves, and struck by force of winds, it rushed on fearfully. But with its keel it cut the mass of foam, while the loud babbling waters dashed around. But when God deluged all the world with rains, 
Then also Noah took thought to observe by counsels of the immortal, for he now had had enough of Nereus. And straightway the house he opened from the polished wall that crosswise was bound fast with skillful stays. And looking out upon the mighty mass of boundless waters, Noah on all sides, and twas his fortune with his eyes to see, fear possessed and shook mightily his heart. And then the air became a little calm, since it was weary, wetting all the world many days. Parting then, it brought to light how pale and blood-red was the mighty sky, and the sun's bright disk wearied, scarcely held Noah his courage, and then forth afar sent he a dove alone, that he might learn if yet firm land appeared. But with tired wing, flying round all things, she again returned, for not yet had the water ebbed away, for it was deeply filling every place. But after resting quietly for days, he sent the dove once more, to learn if yet had ceased the many waters. And she flew and flew on, and went over the earth, and resting her body lightly on the humid ground, again to Noah back she came and bore an olive branch of tidings, a great sign. Courage now filled them all, and great delight, because they hoped to look upon the land. But then thereafter yet another bird of black wing sent he forth as hastily, which, trusting to its wings, flew willingly, and coming to the land continued there. And Noah knew the land was nearer now, but one on dashing waves and the craft divine had here and there over ocean's billows swum, it made fast upon the narrow strand. There is in Phrygia, on the dark mainland, a steep, tall mountain, Ararat its name, because upon it all were to be saved from death, and there was great desire of heart. Thence streams of the great river Marsyas spring, there on a lofty peak the ark abode when the waters ceased. And then again from heaven the voice divine of the great God, this word proclaimed. O Noah, guarded, faithful, just, come boldly forth with thy sons and thy wife, and the three brides, and fill ye all the earth, increasing, multiplying, rendering justice to one another through all generations, until to judgment every race of men shall come, for judgment shall be unto all. Thus spoke the voice divine. Then from his couch Noah encouraged, hastened on the land, and with him went his sons and wife and brides, and creeping things and birds and quadrupeds, and all things else went from the wooden house into one place. And then went Noah forth as eighth, most just of men, when on the waters he had made full twice twenty days and one, because of counsels of the mighty God. Then a new stock of life again arose, golden first, which indeed was sixth and best, from the time when the first formed man appeared, heavenly its name, because all things to God shall be a care. O first race of sixth age, O mighty joy which I thereafter shared, when I escaped sheer ruin by the waves much tossed, with husband and with brothers-in-law, stepfather and stepmother, and with wives of husband's brothers suffering terribly, fitting things, now will I sing. There shall be on the fig tree a many-colored flower, and afterward the royal power and sway shall Kronos have. For three kings of great soul, men most just, shall distribute portions then, and many a year rule, rendering what is just to men who care for toil and deeds of love. And earth shall glory in her many fruits, self-growing, yielding much corn for the race. And the foster fathers, ageless all their days, shall from diseases chill and dreadful be far aloof. They shall die as fallen on sleep, and unto Acheron, in the abodes of Hades, they shall go away. And there shall they have honor, since they were a race of blessed ones, fortunate heroes whom the Lord of Sabaoth gave a noble mind, and with whom always he his counsels shared. But blessed shall they be even when they go in Hades, and then afterward again, oppressive, strong, another race of earth-born men, the Titans. All excel in figure, stature, growth, and there shall be one language, as of old from the first race, God in their breasts implanted. But even these, having a haughty heart and rushing on to ruin, shall at last resolve to fight against the starry heaven. 
and then the stream of the great ocean shall upon them pour its raging waters. But the mighty Lord of Sabaoth, though enraged, shall check his wrath, because he promised that again no flood should be brought upon men of evil soul. But when the great high thundering God shall cause the boundless swelling of the many waters, with their waves hither and thither rising high, to cease from wrath and into other depths of sea their measure lessen, setting bounds by harbors and rough headlands round the land. Then also shall a child of the great God come, clothed in flesh to men, and fashioned like to mortals in the earth. And he doth hear four vowels, and two consonants in him are twice announced. The whole sum I will name. For eight ones, and as many tens on these, and yet eight hundred will reveal the name to men insatiate. And do thou discern in thine own understanding that the Christ is child of the immortal God Most High. And he shall fulfill God's law, not destroy, bearing his very image, and all things shall he teach. Unto him shall priests convey and offer gold and myrrh and frankincense. For all these things he'll also bring to pass. But when a voice shall through the desert land come bearing tidings to men, and to all shall call to make straight paths, and from the head cast wickedness out and illuminate with water all the bodies of mankind, that being born again they may no more, from what is righteous go it all astray. And one of barbarous mind, by dances bound, cutting that voice off, shall bestow reward. Then on a sudden there shall be a sign to mortals, when, watched over, there shall come out of the land of Egypt a fair stone, and on it shall the Hebrew people stumble, but by his guiding nations shall be brought together, for the God who rules on high, they also shall know through him and the way in common light. For unto chosen men will he show life eternal, but the fire will be for ages on the lawless bring, and then shall he the sickly heal, and all who are blameworthy who shall trust in him. And then the blind shall see, the lame shall walk, the deaf shall hearken, and the dumb shall speak. Demons shall he drive out, and of the dead there shall be an uprising. On the waves shall he walk, also, in a desert place, shall he five thousand satisfy with food, from five loaves and a fish out of the sea. And with the remnants of them, for the hope of peoples, shall he fill twelve baskets full. And then shall Israel, drunken, not discern, nor shall they hear, oppressed with feeble cars. But when the maddening wrath of the Most High shall come upon the Hebrews, and take faith away from them, because they slew the Son of the Heavenly God. Then also with foul lips shall Israel give him cuffs and spittle drugged, and gall for food and vinegar unmixed for drink will they, with evil madness smitten in bosom and in heart, give impiously, not seeing with their eyes, more blind than moles, more terrible than crawling poisonous beasts, fast bound by heavy sleep. But when his hands he shall spread forth and measure out all things, and bear the crown of thorns, and they shall pierce his side with reeds, for which dark monstrous night shall be for three hours in the midst of day. Then also shall the temple of Solomon bring to an end a mighty sign for men, when he shall to the house of Hades go proclaiming resurrection to the dead. But when, in three days, he shall come again unto the light, and show his form to men, and teach all things, Ascending in the clouds unto the house of heaven shall he go, leaving the world a gospel covenant. And in his name shall blossom a new shoot from nations that are guided by the law of the Mighty One. But also after this there shall be wise guides, and then afterward there shall be a cessation of the prophets. After that, when the Hebrew people reap their evil harvest, shall a Roman king, much gold and silver, utterly destroy. And afterward, shall other royal powers continuously arise as kingdoms perish, and they will oppress mortals. But great fall shall be for those men, when they shall begin unrighteous arrogance. But when the temple of Solomon in the holy land shall fall, cast down by the barbarous men in brazen mail, and from the land the Hebrews shall be driven wandering and wasted, and among the wheat they shall much darnel mingle, there shall be evil contention among all mankind, 
and the city suffering outrage shall bewail each other in their breasts, receiving the wrath of the great God, since they wrought evil work. Book Two Now while I much entreated God restrained my wise song, also in my breast again he put the charming voice of words divine. In my whole body terror-stricken these I follow, for I know not that I speak, but God impels me to proclaim each thing. But when on earth come shocks, fierce thunderbolts, thunders and lightnings, storms and evil blight, and rage of jackals and of wolves, manslaughter, destruction of men and of lowing kine, four-footed cattle and laborious mules, and goats and sheep, then shall the ample field be barren from neglect and fruits shall fail, and there shall be a selling of their freedom among most men, and robbery of temples. And then shall, after these appear of men, the tenth race, when the earth-shaking lightener shall break the zeal for idols, and shall shake the people of seven-hilled Rome, and riches great shall perish, burn by Vulcan's fiery flame. And then shall bloody signs from heaven descend. But yet, the whole world of unnumbered men, enraged, shall kill each other, and in tumult shall God send famines, plagues, and thunderbolts on men, who, without justice, judge of rights. And lack of men shall be in all the world, so that if anyone beheld a trace of man on earth, he would be wonderstruck. And then shall the great God who dwells in heaven, Savior of pious men, in all things prove. And then shall there be peace and wisdom deep, and the fruit-bearing land shall yield again abundant fruits, divided not in parts, nor yet enslaved. And every harbor, then, and every haven shall be free to men as formerly, and shamelessness shall perish. And then will God show mortals a great sign, for like a lustrous crown shall shine a star, bright, all resplendent, from the radiant heaven, days not a few. And then will he display from heaven a crown for contest unto men who wrestle. And then there shall be again a mighty contest of triumphal march into the heavenly sky, and it shall be for all men in the world, and have the fame of immortality. And every people shall then in the immortal contests strive for splendid victory. For no one there can shamelessly with silver buy a crown. For unto them will the pure Christ adjudge that which is due and crown the ones approved, and give his martyrs an immortal prize who carry on the contest unto death. And unto chaste men who run their race well will he the incorruptible reward of the prize give, and to all men allot that which is due, and also to strange nations that live a holy life and no one God. And those who have regard for marriages and keep themselves far from adulteries, to give them rich gifts, eternal hope he'll give. For every human soul is God's free gift, and tis not right men stain it with vile deeds. Do not be rich unrighteously, but lead a life of probity. Be satisfied with what thou hast, and keep thyself from that which is another's. Speak not what is false, but have a care for all things that are true. Revere not idols vainly, but the God imperishable honor always first, and next thy parents. Render all things due, and into unjust judgment come thou not. Do not cast out the poor unrighteously, nor judge by outward show. If wickedly thou judgest, God hereafter will judge thee. Avoid false testimony. Tell the truth. Maintain thy virgin purity, and guard love among all. Deal measures that are just, for beautiful is measure full to all. Strike not the scales one side, but draw them equal. Forswear not ignorantly nor willingly. God hates the perjured man in that he swore. A gift proceeding out of unjust deeds never receive in hand. Do not steal seed. Accursed through many generations he who took it unto scattering of life. Indulge not vile lusts. Slander not nor kill. Give the toil-worn his hire. Do not afflict the poor man. Unto orphans help afford and to widows and the needy. Talk with sense, hold fast in heart a secret. Be unwilling to act unjustly, nor yet tolerate unrighteous men. 
give to the poor at once, and say not, Come tomorrow. Of thy grain, give to the needy with perspiring hand. He who gives alms knows how to lend to God. Mercy redeems from death when judgment comes. Not sacrifice, but mercy God desires rather than sacrifice. The naked clothe. Share thy bread with the hungry. In thy house receive the shelterless and lead the blind. Pity the shipwrecked, for the voyage is uncertain. To the fallen give a hand, and save the man that stands without defense. Common to all is suffering. Life's a wheel, riches unstable. Having wealth, reach out to the poor thy hand. Of what God gave to thee, bestow thou also on the needy one. Common is the whole life of mortal men, but it comes out unequal. When thou seest a poor man, never banter him with words, nor harshly accost a man who may be blamed. One's life in death is proven. If one did the unlawful or just, it shall be decided when he to judgment comes. Disable not thy mind with wine nor drink excessively. Eat not blood and abstain from things offered to idols. Gird not on the sword for slaughter, but defense. And would thou might it neither lawlessly nor justly use. For if thou kill an enemy, thy hand thou dost defile. Keep from thy neighbor's field, nor trespass on it, just as every landmark and trespass painful. Useful is possession of lawful wealth, but of unrighteous gains tis worthless. Harm not any growing fruit of the field, and let strangers be esteemed in equal honor with the citizens, for much enduring hospitality shall all experience as each other's guests. But let there not be any one a stranger among you, since, ye mortals, all of you are of one blood, and no land has for men any sure place. Wish not, nor pray for wealth, but pray to live from few things, and possess nothing at all unjust. The love of gain is mother of all evil. Do not long for gold or silver. In them there will be a double-edged and soul-destroying iron. A snare to men continually are gold and silver. Gold, of evil source, of life destructive, troubling all things, would that thou wert not to mortals such a long defore bane. For wars, because of thee, and pillaging, and murders come, and children hate their sires, and brothers and sisters those of their own blood. Plot no deceit, and do not arm thy heart against a friend. Keep not concealed within a different thought from what thou speakest forth, nor, like rock-clinging polyp, change with place. But with all be frank, and things from the soul speak thou forth. Whosoever willfully commits a wrong, an evil man is he. But he that does it under force, the end I tell not. But let each man's will be right. Pride not thyself in wisdom, power, or wealth. God only is the wise and mighty one, and full of riches. Do not vex thy heart with evils that are past, for what is done can never be undone. Let not thy hand be hasty, but ferocious passion curb. For many times has one in striking done murder without design. Let suffering be common, neither great nor overmuch. Excessive good has not brought forth to men that which is helpful, and much luxury leads to immoderate lusts. Much wealth is prowl and makes one grow to wanton violence. Passionate feeling creeping in, effects destructive madness. Anger is a lust, and when it is excessive, it is wrath. The zeal of good men is a noble thing, but of the base is base. Of wicked men, the boldness is destructive, but renown follows that of the good. To be revered is virtuous love, but that of Cyprus works increase of shame. A silly man is called very agreeable among his fellows. With moderation eat, drink and converse. Of all things, moderation is the best. But trespass of its limit brings to grief. Be not thou envious, faithless, or abusive, or evil-minded, or a false deceiver. Be prudent and abstain from shameless deeds. Imitate not what's evil, but leave thou vengeance to justice. For persuasion is a useful thing, but strife engenders strife. Trust not too quickly, ere thou see the end. This is the contest, 
These are the rewards. These are the prizes. This the gate of life and entrance into immortality, which God in heaven unto most righteous men appointed a reward for victory. And through this gate shall gloriously pass those who shall then receive the victor's crown. But when this sign shall appear everywhere, children with gray hair on their temples born, and human sufferings, famines, plagues, and wars, and change of times, and many a tearful wail, ah, of how many parents in the lands will children mourn and piteously weep, and with shrouds bury flesh and limbs and earth, mother of peoples, with the blood and dust themselves defiling. O ye wretched men of the last generation, evildoers, terrible, childish, not perceiving this, that when the tribes of women do not bear, the harvest time of mortal men is come. Near is the ruin when impostors come instead of prophets speaking on the earth. And Belier shall come and many signs perform for men. And then of holy men, elect and faithful, there shall be confusion, and pillaging of them and of the Hebrews. And there shall be upon them fearful wrath, when from the east a people of twelve tribes shall come in search of kindred Hebrew people, whom a Syrian shoot destroyed, and over these shall nations perish. But they afterwards shall over men exceeding mighty rule, elect and faithful Hebrews, and enslave them as before, since their power never shall fail. He that is highest of all, the all-surveying, dwelling in heaven, will scatter sleep on men, covering the eyelids over. O blessed servants, whom when the Master comes he finds awake, and they all watch at all times, and expect with sleepless eyes. For it will be at dawn, or eve, or midday, but he sure shall come. And it shall be as I say, it shall be to them that sleep, that from the starry heaven the stars at midday will to all appear, with the two lights as the time hastens on, and then the Tishbite, urging from the heaven his chariot celestial, and on earth arriving, shall to all the world display three evil signs of life to be destroyed. Alas, for all the women in that day who shall be found with burden in the womb. Alas, for all who suckle tender babes. Alas, for all who shall dwell on the waves. Alas, for women who shall see that day. For a dark mist shall hide the boundless world, east, west, and south, and north. And then shall flow a mighty stream of burning fire from heaven, and every place consume, earth, ocean vast, and gleaming sea, and lakes and rivers, springs, and cruel Hades, and the heavenly sky. And heavenly lights shall break up into one, and into outward form all desolate, for stars from heaven shall fall into all seas, and all the souls of men shall gnash their teeth, burned both by sulfur, stream, and force of fire, in ravenous soil, and ashes hide all things. And then of the world all the elements shall be bereft, air, earth, sea, light, sky, days, nights. And no longer in the air shall fly birds without number, nor shall living things that swim the sea swim any more at all, nor frighted vessel over the billows pass, nor kind straight guiding plow the field, nor sound of furious winds. But he shall fuse all things together, and shall pick out what is pure. But when the immortal gods, eternal angels, Arachiel, Ramiel, Uriel, Samiel, and Aziel, they that know how many evils anyone did before, shall from dark gloom then lead to judgment all the souls of men before the judgment seat of the great God immortal. For imperishable is one only, himself the Almighty, one who shall be judge of mortals. And to them that dwell beneath, will then the Heavenly One give souls and spirit and voice, and also bones fitted with joints unto all kinds of flesh, and both the flesh and sinews, veins and skin about the body, and hair as before. Divinely fashioned and with breathing moved shall bodies of those on earth one day be raised. And then shall Uriel, mighty angel, break the bolts of stern and lasting adamant, which monstrous, bold the brazen gates of Hades, straight cast them down, and unto judgment lead all forms that have endured much suffering. 
chiefly the shapes of titans born of old, and giants, and all whom the deluge whelmed, and all that perished in the billowy seas, and all that furnished banquet for the beasts and creeping things and fowls. These, in a mass, shall Uriel summon to the judgment seat, and also those whom flesh-devouring fire destroyed in flame. Even these shall he collect and place before the judgment seat of God. And when the high thundering Lord of Sabaoth, making an end of fate, shall raise the dead, sit on his heavenly throne and firmly fix the mighty pillar, then amid the clouds, Christ, who himself is incorruptible, shall come unto the incorruptible in glory with pure angels, and shall sit at the right hand of the great judgment seat to judge the life of pious and the way of impious men. And Moses, the great friend of the Most High, shall come enrobed in flesh. Also great Abraham himself shall come, Isaac and Jacob, Joshua, Daniel, Elijah, Habakkuk, and Jonah, and those whom the Hebrews slew. But he'll destroy the Hebrews after Jeremiah, and all who are to be judged at the judgment seat, that worthy recompense they may receive and pay for all each did in mortal life. And then shall all pass through the burning stream of flame unquenchable, but all the just shall be saved. And the godless furthermore shall to all ages perish, all who did evils aforetime and committed murders, and all who are accomplices therein, liars and thieves and ruiners of home, crafty and terrible, and parasites and marriage breakers pouring forth vile words, dread, wanton, lawless, and idolaters. And all who left the great immortal God became blasphemers, did the pious harm, destroying faith and killing righteous men, and all with a shamelessness deceitful and double-faced rush in as presbyters and reverend ministers who knowingly give unjust judgments, yielding to false words more hurtful than the leopards and the wolves, and more vile and ill that are grossly proud and usurers, who gains on gains amass, and damage orphans and widows in each thing, and all that give to widows and to orphans the fruit of unjust deeds, and all that cast reproach in giving from their own hard toils, and all that left their parents in old age, not paying them at all, nor offering to parents filial duty, and all who were disobedient and against their sires spoke a harsh word. And all that pledges took and then denied them, and the servants all who were against their masters, and again those who licentiously defiled the flesh, and all who loosed the girdle of the maid for a secret intercourse, and all who caused abortions, and all who their offspring cast unlawfully away, and sorcerers and sorceresses with them. And these wrath of the heavenly and immortal God shall drive against a pillar where shall all around in a circle flow a restless stream of fire. And deathless angels of the immortal God, whoever is, shall bind with lasting bonds in chains of flaming fire and from above punish them all by scourge most terribly. And in Guiana, in the gloom of night, shall they be cast neath many horrid beasts of Tartarus, where darkness is immense. But when there shall be many punishments enforced on all who had an evil heart, yet afterward shall there a fiery wheel from a great river circle them around, because they had a care for wicked deeds. And then one here, another there, shall sires, young children, mothers, nursing babes, in tears, wail their most piteous fate. No fill of tears shall be for them, nor piteous voice be heard of them that moan, one here, another there, but long worn under dark, dank Tartarus, aloud shall they cry. And they shall repay in cursed places thrice as much as all the evil work they did, burned with much fire. And all of them, consumed by raging thirst and hunger, shall in anguish gnash their teeth and call death beautiful, and death shall flee away from them. For neither death nor night shall ever give them rest, and many things in vain will they ask of the God that rules on high, and then will he his face turn openly away from them. For he to erring men gave, in seven ages for repentance, signs by the hands of a virgin undefiled. But the others, all to whom right and fair works and piety and thoughts most just were dear, shall angels, bearing through the burning stream, lead unto light and life exempt from care. Where comes the immortal way of the great God and fountains three, of honey, wine, 
and milk, and equal land for all, divided not by walls or fences, more abundant fruits, spontaneous, shall then bear, and the course of life be common and wealth unapportioned. For there no longer will be poor nor rich, tyrant nor slave, nor any great nor small, nor kings nor leaders, all alike in common. No more at all will one say, night has come, nor morrow comes, nor yesterday has been, nor shall there many days of anxious care, nor spring, nor winter, nor the summer heat, nor autumn be, nor marriage, nor yet death, nor sales, nor purchases, nor set of sun, nor rising. For a long day will God make, and to the pious will the Almighty God, imperishable, grant another thing, when they shall ask the imperishable God, that he will suffer men from raging fire and endless gnawing anguish to be saved, and this will he do. For hereafter he will pluck them from the restless flame, elsewhere remove them, and for his own people's sake send them to other and eternal life with the immortals in Elysian field, where move far-stretching billows of the lake of ever-flowing Acheron profound. Ah, miserable woman that I am, what shall I be in that day? For I sinned, being busy foolishly about all things, caring for neither marriage bond nor reason. But even in my wealthy husband's house I shut the needy out, and formerly I knowingly performed unlawful things. But, Savior, though I shameless things performed, do thou from my tormentors rescue me, a shameless woman. And I pray thee now, make me to rest a little from my song, holy giver of manna, king of the great realm. Book 3 O thou high thundering blessed heavenly one, who hast set in their place the cherubim, I, who have uttered what is all too true, entreat thee, let me have a little rest, for my heart has grown weary from within. But why again leaps my heart and my soul, with a whip smitten from within constrained, to utter forth its message unto all? But yet again will I proclaim all things, which God commands me to proclaim to men. O men, that in your image have a form fashioned of God, why do ye vainly stray, and walk not in the straight way, always mindful of the immortal Maker? God is one, sovereign, ineffable, dwelling in heaven, the self-existent and invisible, himself alone beholding everything. Him sculptor's hand made not, nor is his form shown by man's art from gold or ivory. But he, eternal Lord, proclaims himself as one who is, and was erst, and shall be again hereafter. For who, being mortal, can see God with his eyes? Or who shall bear to hear the only name of heaven's great God, the ruler of the world? He by his word created all things, even heaven, and sea, and tireless sun, and full moon, and bright stars, and mighty mother Tethys, springs and rivers, imperishable fire, and days and nights. This is the God who formed four-letter Adam, the first one formed, and filling with his name east, west, and south, and north. The same is he who fixed the pattern of the human form, and made wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls, Ye do not worship, neither fear, ye God, but vainly go astray and bow the knee to serpents, and make offerings to cats, and idols, and stone images of men, and sit before the doors of godless temples. Ye guard him, who is God, who keeps all things, and marry with the wickedness of stones. Forget the judgment of the immortal Savior who made the heaven and earth. Alas, a race that has delight in blood, deceitful, vile, ungodly, of false, double-tongued, immoral men, adulterous, idolatrous, designing fraud, and evil madness raving in their hearts, for themselves plundering, having shameless soul. For no one who has riches will impart to another, but dire wickedness shall be among all mortals, and for sake of gain will many widows not at all keep faith, but secretly love others and the bond of life those who have husbands do not keep. But when Rome shall over Egypt also rule, 
governing always, then shall there appear the greatest kingdom of the immortal king over men. And a holy Lord shall come to hold the scepter over every land unto all ages of fast hastening time. And then shall come inexorable wrath on Latin men. Three shall by piteous fate and damage Rome, and perish shall all men with their own houses, when from heaven shall flow a fiery cataract. Ah, wretched me! When shall that day and when shall judgment come of the immortal God, the mighty King? But just now, O ye cities, ye are built, and all adorned with temples and race grounds, markets and images of wood, of gold, of silver and of stone, that ye may come unto the bitter day. For it shall come, when there shall pass among all men a stench of brimstone. Yet each thing will I declare in all the cities where men suffer ills. From the Sabastines, Belier shall come hereafter, and the height of hills shall he establish, and shall make the sea stand still, and the great fiery sun, and the bright moon. And he shall raise the dead, and many signs work before men. But nothing shall be brought by him unto completion but deceit, and many mortals shall be led astray, Hebrews, both true and choice, and lawless men, besides who never gave ear to God's word. But when the threatenings of the mighty God shall draw near, and a flaming power shall come by billow to the earth, it shall consume both Belier and all the haughty men who put their trust in him. And thereupon shall the whole world be governed by the hands of a woman, and obedient everywhere. Then when a widow shall over all the world gain the rule, and cast in the mighty sea both gold and silver, also brass and iron of short-lived men into the deep shall cast, then all the elements shall be bereft of order, when the God of who dwells on high shall roll the heaven, even as a scroll is rolled. And to the mighty earth and sea shall fall the entire multiform sky, and there shall flow a tireless cataract of raging fire, and it shall burn the land, and burn the sea, and heavenly sky, and night, and day, and melt creation itself together, and pick out what is pure. No more laughing spheres of light, nor night, nor dawn, nor many days of care, nor spring, nor winter, nor the summertime, nor autumn. And then of the mighty God the judgment midway in a mighty age shall come, when all these things shall come to pass. O navigable waters, and each land of the Orient and of the Occident, subject shall all things be to him who comes into the world again, and therefore he himself became first conscious of his power. But when the threatenings of the mighty God are fulfilled, which he threatened mortals once, when in a Syrian land they built a tower, and they all spoke one language, and resolved to mount aloft into the starry heaven. But on the air, the immortal stairway put a mighty force, and then winds from above cast down the great tower and stirred mortals up to wrangling with each other. Therefore men gave to that city the name of Babylon. Now when the tower fell and the tongues of men turned to all sorts of sounds, straightway all earth was filled with men and kingdoms were divided. And then the generation tenth appeared of mortal men, from the time when the flood came upon earlier men, and Kronos reigned, and Titan, and Iapetus, and men called them best offspring of Gaia and of Uranus, giving to them names both of earth and heaven, since they were very first of mortal men. So there were three divisions of the earth according to the allotment of each man, and each one having his own portion reigned and fought not, for a father's oaths were there, and equal were their portions. But the time complete of old age on the father came, and he died, and the son's infringing oaths stirred up against each other bitter strife, which one should have the royal rank and rule over all mortals, and against each other Kronos and Titan fought. But Rhea and Gaia and Aphrodite fond of crowns, Demeter and Hestia and Diane of fair locks, brought them to friendship, and together called all who were kings, both brothers and near kin, and others of the same ancestral blood, and they judged Kronos should reign king of all, for he was oldest and of noblest form. But Titan laid on Kronos mighty oaths to rear no male posterity, that he himself might reign when age and fate should come to Kronos. And whenever Rhea bore, beside her sat the Titans, and all males in pieces tore, 
but let the females live to be reared by the mother. But when now, at the third birth, the August Rhea bore, she brought forth Hera first, and when they saw a female offspring, the fierce Titan men betook them to their homes, and thereupon Rhea, a male child, bore. And having bound three men of Crete by oath, she quickly sent him into Phrygia to be reared apart in secret. Therefore did they name him Zeus, for he was sent away, and thus she sent Poseidon also secretly away. And Pluto, third, did Rhea yet again, noblest of women, at Dodona bear. Whence flows Euripus's river's liquid course, and with Peneus mixed pours in the sea its water, and men call it Stygian. But when the Titans heard that there were sons kept secretly, whom Kronos and his wife Rhea begat, then Titan sixty youths together gathered, and held fast in chains Kronos and his wife Rhea, and concealed them in the earth and guarded them in bonds. And then the sons of powerful Kronos heard, and a great war and uproar they roused. And this is the beginning of dire war among all mortals, for it is indeed with mortals the prime origin of war. And then did God award the Titans evil, and all of Titans and of Kronos born died. But then, as time rolled around, there rose the Egyptian kingdom, then that of the Persians, and of the Medes, and Ethiopians, and of Assyria and Babylon, and then that of the Macedonians, Egypt yet again, then that of Rome. And then a message of the mighty God was set within my breast, and it bade me proclaim through all earth, and in royal hearts, plant things which are to be. And to my mind, this God imparted first, bow many kingdoms have been together gathered of mankind. For first of all the house of Solomon shall include horsemen of Phoenicia and Syria and of the islands too, and the race of Pamphylians and Persians and Phrygians, Carians and Mysians, and the race of the Lydians rich in gold, and then shall Hellenus, proud and impure, then shall a Macedonian nation rule, great, shrewd, who as a fearful cloud of war shall come to mortals. But the God of heaven shall utterly destroy them from the depth. And then shall be another kingdom, white and many-headed, from the western sea, which shall rule much land and shake many men, and to all kings bring terror afterwards, and out of many cities shall destroy much gold and silver. But in the vast earth there will again be gold, and silver too, and ornament, and they will oppress mortals. And to those men shall great disaster be, when they begin unrighteous arrogance, and forthwith in them there shall be a force of wickedness. Male will consort with male, and children they will place in dens of shame. And in those days there shall be among men a great affliction, and it shall disturb all things, and break all things, and fill all things with evils by a shameful covetousness, and by ill-gotten wealth in many lands, but most of all in Macedonia. And it shall stir up hatred, and all guile shall be with them, even to the seventh kingdom of which a king of Egypt shall be king, who shall be a descendant from the Greeks. And then the nation of the mighty God shall be again strong, and they shall be guides of life to all men. But why did God place this also in my mind to tell? What first, and what next, and what evil last shall be on all men? Which of these shall take the lead? First, on the Titans will God visit evil, for they shall pay to mighty Kronos' sons the penal satisfaction, since they bound both Kronos and the mother dearly loved. Again shall there be tyrants for the Greeks, and fierce kings overweening and impure, adulterous and altogether bad. And for men shall be no more rest from war, and the dread Phrygians shall perish all, and unto Troy shall evil come that day, and to the Persians and Assyrians evil shall straightway come, and to all Egypt and Libya and the Ethiopians, and to the Carians and Pamphylians, evil to pass from one place to another, and to all mortals. Why now, one by one, do I speak forth? But when the first receive fulfillment, then straightway shall come on men the second. So the very first I'll tell. There shall an evil come to pious men who dwell by the great temple of Solomon, and who are progeny of righteous men. 
Alike of all these also I will tell the tribe and line of fathers and homeland, all things with care, O mortal shrewd in mind. There is a city on the earth, Ur of the Chaldees, whence there is a race of men most righteous, to whom both goodwill and noble deeds have ever been a care. For they have no concern about the course of the sun's revolution, nor the moon's, nor wondrous things beneath the earth, nor depth of joy-imparting sea, Oceanus, nor signs of sneezing, nor the wings of birds, nor soothsayers, nor wizards, nor enchanters, nor tricks of dull words of ventriloquists. Neither do they astrologize with skill of the Chaldeans, nor astronomize. Oh, for these are all deceptive, in so far as foolish men go seeking day by day, training their souls unto no useful work. And then did they teach miserable men deceptions. Once to mortals on the earth come many evils leading them astray from good ways and just deeds. But they have care for righteousness and virtue, and not greed, which breeds unnumbered ills to mortal men, war and unending famine. But with them just measure, both in fields and cities, holds. Nor steal they from each other in the night, nor drive off herds of cattle, sheep, and goats nor neighbor remove landmarks of a neighbor, nor any man of great wealth grieve the one less favored, nor to widows cause distress, but rather aids them, ever helping them, with wheat and wine and oil, and always does the rich man in the country send a share at the time of the harvests unto them that have not, but are needy, thus fulfilling the saying of the mighty God, a hymn in legal setting, for the heavenly one finished the earth a common good for all. Now when the people of twelve tribes depart from Egypt, and with leaders sent of God nightly pursue their way by a pillar of fire, enduring all the day by one of cloud, for them then God a leader will appoint, a great man, Moses, whom a princess found beside a marsh, and carried off and reared and called her son, and at the time he came as leader for the people whom God led from Egypt unto the steel Sinai mount, his own law God delivered them from heaven writing on two flat stones all righteous things which he enjoined to do. And if perchance one give no heed, he must unto the law make satisfaction either at men's hands or, if men's notice he escape, he shall, by ample satisfaction, be destroyed. For the heavenly finished earth a common good for all, and in all hearts as best gift thought, to them alone the bounteous field yields fruit a hundredfold from one and thus completes God's measure. But to them shall also come misfortune, nor do they escape from plague. And even thou, forsaking thy fair shrine, shalt flee away when it becomes thy lot to leave the holy land. And thou shalt be carried to the Assyrians, and shalt see young children and wives serving hostile men. And every means of life and wealth shall perish, and every land shall be filled up with thee, and every sea and every one shall be offended with thy customs, and thy land shall all be desert. And the altar fenced and temple of the great God, and long walls shall all fall to the ground, since in thy heart the holy law of the immortal God thou didst not keep. But, erring, thou didst serve unseemly images, and didst not fear the immortal Father, God of all mankind, nor will to honor him. But images of mortals thou didst honor, therefore now of time, seven decades, shall thy fruitful land and the wonders of thy temple all be waste. But there remains for thee a goodly end and greatest glory, as the immortal God granted thee. But do thou wait and confide in the great God's pure laws, when he shall lift thy wearied knee upright unto the light. And then will God from heaven send a king to judge each man in blood and light of fire. There is a royal tribe, the race of which shall be unfailing, and as times revolve, this race shall bear rule and begin to build God's temple anew. And all the Persian kings shall aid with bronze and gold and well-wrought iron, for God himself will give the holy dream by night, and then the temple shall again be as it was before. Now when my soul had rest from inspired song, and I prayed the great Father for a rest from constraint. Even in my heart again was set a message of the mighty God, and he bade me proclaim through all the earth and plant in royal minds things yet to be. And in my mind God put this first to say, 
how many lamentable sufferings the immortal purposed upon Babylon because she, his great temple, had destroyed. Alas, alas for thee, O Babylon, and for the offspring of the Assyrian men. Through all the earth the rush of sinful men shall sometime come, and shout of mortal men, and stroke of the great God, who inspires songs, shall ruin every land. For high in the air to thee, O Babylon, shall it come from above, and out of heaven from holy ones to thee shall it come down, and the soul and thy children shall the Eternal utterly destroy. And then shalt thou be, as thou wast before, as one not born. And then shalt thou be filled again with blood, as thou thyself before didst shed that of good, just and holy men, whose blood yet cries out to the lofty heaven. To thee, O Egypt, shall a great blow come, and dreadful, to thy homes which thou didst hope might never fall on thee. For through thy midst a sword shall pass, and scattering and death and famine shall prevail unto of kings the seventh generation, and then cease. Alas for thee, O land of Gog and Magog, in the midst of the rivers of Ethiopia! What pouring out of blood shalt thou receive, and house of judgment among men be called, and thy land of much dew shall drink black blood. Alas for thee, O Libya, and alas both sea and land! O daughters of the west, so shall ye come unto a bitter day, and ye shall come pursued by grievous strife, dreadful and grievous. There shall be again a dreadful judgment, and ye all shall come by force unto destruction. For ye tore in pieces the great house of the immortal, and with iron teeth ye chewed it dreadfully. Therefore shalt thou then look upon thy land, full of the dead, some of them fallen by war, and by the demon of all violence, famine and plague, and some by barbarous foes. And all thy land shall be a wilderness, and desolations shall thy cities be. And in the west there shall a star shine forth, which they will call a comet, sign to men of the sword, and of famine, and of death, and murder of great leaders, and chief men. And yet again there shall be among men greatest signs, for deep eddying Tanaeus shall leave Metoas's lake, and there shall be down the deep stream a fruitful furrow's track, and the vast flow shall hold a neck of land, and there are hollow chasms and yawning pits, and many cities, men and all, shall fall. In Asia, Iasus, Sebrin, Pandonia, Colophon, Ephesus, Nicaea, Antioch, Siagra, Sinope, Smyrna, Marina, most happy Gaza, Heropolis, Astapelia, and in Europe, Tanagra, Clitor, Basilis, Meropia, Antigone, Magnesa, Mycene, Oianthia. Know then that the destructive race of Egypt is near destruction, and the past year then is better for the Alexandrians. As much of tribute as Rome did receive of Asia, even thrice as many goods shall Asia back again from Rome receive, and her destructive outrage pay her back. As many as from Asia ever served a house of the Italians, twenty times as many Italians shall in Asia serve in poverty, and numerous debts incur. O virgin, soft rich child of Latin Rome, oft at thy much-remembered marriage feasts drunken with wine, now shalt thou be a slave, and wedded in no honorable way. And oft shall mistress shear thy pretty hair, and reeking satisfaction cast thee down from heaven to earth, and from the earth again raise thee to heaven, for mortals of low rank and of unrighteous life are held fast bound. And of avenging Smyrna, overthrown, there shall be no thought, but by evil plans and wickedness of them that have command shall Samos be sand, Delos shall be dull, and Rome a room but the decrees of God shall all of them be perfectly fulfilled. And a calm peace to Asian land shall go, and Europe shall be happy then, well fed, pure air, full of years, strong and undisturbed by wintry storms and hail, bearing all things, even birds and creeping things and beasts of earth. O oh, happy upon earth shall that man be, or woman, what a home unspeakable of happy ones. For from the starry heaven shall all good order come upon mankind, and justice, 
and the prudent unity which of all things is excellent for men, and kindness, confidence, and love of guests. But far from them shall lawlessness depart, blame, envy, wrath, and folly. Poverty shall flee away from men, and force shall flee, and murder, baneful strifes, and bitter feuds, and theft, and every evil in those days. But Macedonia shall to Asia bear a grievous suffering, and the greatest sore to Europe shall spring up from Cronian stock, a family of bastards and of slaves. And she shall tame fenced city Babylon, and of each land the sun looks down upon, call herself mistress, and then come to naught by ruinous misfortunes, having fame in later generations distant far. And sometime into Asia's prosperous land shall come a man unheard of, shoulder-clad with purple robe, fierce, unjust, fiery, and this man who wields the thunderbolt roused forwards, and all Asia shall sustain an evil yoke, and her soil wet with rain shall drink much murder. But even so shall Hades destroy the unknown king, and that man's offspring shall forthwith perish by the race of those whose offspring he himself would fain destroy, producing one root which the bane of men shall cut from ten horns, and plant by their side another plant. A father, purple-clad, shall cut a warlike father off, and Ares, baneful and hostile, by a grandson's hand, shall himself perish. And then shall the horn planted beside them forthwith bear the rule. And unto life-sustaining Phrygia straightway shall there a certain token be, when Rhea's blood-stained race, and the great earth blooming perennial in impervious roots, shall, root and branch, in one night disappear with the city, men and all, of the earth shaker Poseidon, which place they shall sometime call Doraleum, of dark ancient Phrygia much bewailed. Therefore shall that time be called earth shaker, dens of earth shall he break up, and walls demolish, and not signs of good, but a beginning of evil shall be made. The baneful violence of general war ye will have, sons of Aeneas, dative blood of Illus from the soil. But afterwards, a spoil shalt thou become for greedy men. O Ilium, I pity thee, for there shall bloom in Sparta, an Aranus, very fair, ever famed, noblest scion, and shall leave on Asia and Europe a wide spreading wave. But to thee most of all shall bear and cause wailings and toils and groans, but there shall be undying fame with those who are to come, and there shall be an aged mortal then, false writer and of doubtful native land, and in his eyes the light shall fade away. Large mind and verses measured with great skill shall he have, and be blended with two names, shall call himself a Chian, and shall write of Ilium, not truthfully indeed, but skillfully, for of my verse and meters he will be master. For he first my books will open with his hands, but he himself will much embellish helmed chiefs of war, Hector of Priam and Achilles son of Peleus, and the others who have care for warlike deeds. And also by their side will he make gods stand, empty-headed men, false writing every way. And it shall be glory the rather widely spread for them to die at Ilium, but he himself shall also works of recompense receive. Also to Lycia, shall a Locrian race cause many evils. And thee, Chalcedon, holding by lot a strait of narrow sea, shall an Aetolian youth sometime despoil. Sisychus, also thy vast wealth the sea shall break off, and Byzantium of Ares, thou sometime shalt by Asia be laid waste. And also groans and blood immeasurable shalt thou receive. And Cragus, lofty mount of Lycia, from thy peaks by yawning chasms of opened rock shall babbling water flow, until even Patara's oracles shall cease. O Sisychus, that dwellest by Propontis the wine-producing, round thee, Rindacus, shall crash the crested billow. And thou, Rhodes, daughter of day, shalt long be unenslaved, and great shall be thy happiness hereafter, and on the sea thy power shall be supreme. But afterwards, a spoil shalt thou become for greedy men, and put upon thy neck by beauty and by wealth a fearful yoke. A Lydian earthquake shall again despoil the power of Persia, and most horribly shall the people of Europe and Asia suffer pain. 
and Sidon's hurtful king, with battle din dreadful, shall work a mournful overthrow to the seafaring Samians. On the soil shall slain men's dark blood babble to the sea, and wives together with the noble brides shall their outrageous insolence lament, some for their bridegrooms, some for fallen sons. O sign of Cyprus, may an earthquake waste thy phalanxes away, and many souls with one accord shall Hades bold and charge, and trallis near Ephesus, and walls well made, and very precious wealth of men shall be dissolved by earthquake, and the land shall burst out with hot water, and the earth shall swallow down those who are by the fire and stench of brimstone heavily oppressed. And Samos shall in time build royal houses. But to thee, Italy, no foreign war shall come, but lamentable tribal blood, not easily exhausted, much renowned, shall make thee, impudent one, desolate. And thou thyself besides hot ashes stretched, as thou in thine own heart didst not foresee, shalt slay thyself, and thou shalt not of men be mother, but a nurse of beasts of prey. But one from Italy shall come a man, a spoiler. Then, Laodicea, thou, beautiful city of the Carians, by Lysus' wondrous water, falling prone, shalt weep in silence for thy boastful sire. Thracian and Crobizi shall rise up on Hamus. Chatter of teeth to the Campanians comes because of wasting famine. Corsica weeps her old father and Sardinia shall by great storms of winter and the strokes of a holy god sink down in ocean depths, great wonder of to the sea. Alas, alas, how many virgin maids will Hades wed, and of as many youths will the deep take without funeral rites? Alas, alas, the helpless little ones and the vast riches swimming in the sea. O happy land of Mysians, suddenly a royal race shall be formed. Truly now, not for a long time, shall Chalcedon be, and there shall be a very bitter grief to the Galatians, and to Tenedos shall there a last but greatest evil come. And Sisian, with strong yells, and Corinth, thou shalt boast over all, but flute shall sound like strain. Now, when my soul had rest from inspired song, even again within my heart was set a message of the mighty God, and he commanded me to prophesy on earth. Woe, woe to the race of Phoenician men and women and all cities by the sea. Not one of you shall in the common light abide before the shining of the sun, nor of life shall there any longer be number and tribe, because of unjust speech and lawless life impure which they lived, opening a mouth impure and fearful words, deceitful and unrighteous forth, and stood against the God, the King, and opened loathsome month deceitfully, therefore may he subdue them terribly by strokes over all the earth, and bitter fate shall God send on them burning from the ground. Cities, and of the cities the foundations. Woe, woe to thee, O Crete! To thee shall come a very painful stroke, and terribly shall the Eternal sack thee, and again shall every land behold thee, black with smoke, fire, never shall leave thee, but thou shalt be burned. Woe, woe to thee, O Thrace! So shalt thou come beneath a servile yoke when the Galatians, united with the sons of Dardanus, rush on to ravage Hellas. Thine shall be the evil, and unto a foreign land much shalt thou give, not anything receive. Woe to thee, Gog and Magog, and to all, one after another, Mardians and Daeans, how many evils fate shall bring on thee? Woe also to the soil of Lycia, and those of Mysia and Phrygia, and many nations of Pamphylians and Lydians, Carians, Cappadocians, and Ethiopian and Arabian men of a strange tongue shall fall. How now may I of each speak fitly? For on all the nations which dwell on earth, the highest shall send dire plague. When now again a barbarous nation comes against the Greeks, it shall slay many heads of chosen men, and they shall tear in pieces many fat flocks of sheep of men, and herds of horses and of mules, and lowing kine. And well-made houses shall they burn with fire lawlessly, and unto a foreign land shall they by force lead many slaves away, and children 
and deep-girded women soft from bridal chambers creeping on before with delicate feet, and they shall be bound fast with fetters by their foes of foreign tongue, suffering all fearful outrage, and to them there shall not be one to supply the toil of battle and come to their help in life. And they shall see their goods and all their wealth enriched the enemy, and there shall be a trembling of the knees, and there shall fly a hundred, and one shall destroy them all, and five shall rout a mighty company, but they among themselves mixed shamefully shall by war and dire tumult bring delight to enemies, but sorrow to the Greeks. And then upon all Hellas there shall be a servile yoke, and war and pestilence together shall upon all mortals come, and God will make the mighty heaven on high, like brass, and over all the earth a drought, and earth itself like iron. And thereupon shall mortals all lament the barrenness and lack of cultivation, and on earth shall he set, who created heaven and earth, a much distressing fire. And of all men the third part only shall thereafter be. O Greece, why hast thou trusted mortal men as leaders who cannot escape from death? And wherefore bringest thou thy foolish gifts unto the dead and sacrifice to idols? Who put the error in thy heart to do these things and leave the face of God the Mighty? Honor the All-Father's name, and let it not escape thee. It is now a thousand years, yea, and five hundred more since haughty kings ruled over the Greeks, who first to mortal men introduced evils, setting up for worship images many of gods that are dead, because of which ye were taught foolish thoughts. But when the anger of the mighty God shall come upon you, then ye'll recognize the face of God the Mighty. And all souls of men, with mighty groaning, lifting up their hands to the broad heaven, shall begin to call the great King, Helper, and to seek the Rescuer from great wrath who is to be. But come and learn this, and store in your hearts what troubles in the rolling years shall come, and what as whole burnt offering Hellas brought of cows and bellowing bulls unto the temple of the great God, she from ill-sounding war and fear and pestilence shall flee away and from the servile yoke escape again. But until that time there shall be a race of godless men, even when that fated day shall reach its end. For offering to God ye should not make till all things come to pass, which God alone shall purpose not in vain to be all fulfilled and strong force shall urge. And there shall be again a holy race of godly men, keeping to the counsels and mind of the Most High, shall honor much the great God's temple with drink offerings, burnt offerings, and holy hecatombs, with sacrifices of fat bulls, choice rams, firstlings of sheep, and the fat thighs of lambs, sacredly offering whole burnt offerings on the great altar. And in righteousness, having obtained the law of the Most High, Blessed shall they dwell in cities and rich fields. And prophets shall be set on high for them by the immortal, bringing great delight unto all mortals. For to them alone the mighty God his gracious counsel gave, and faith and noblest thought within their hearts. They have not by vain things been led astray, nor pay they honor to the works of men made of gold, brass, silver, and ivory, nor statues of dead gods of wood and stone, besmeared clay, figures of the painter's art, and all that empty-minded mortals will. But they lift up their pure arms unto heaven, rise from the couch at daybreak, always hands with water cleanse, and honor only him who is immortal, and whoever rules, and then their parents. And above all men do they respect the lawful marriage bed, and they have not base intercourse with boys, as do Phoenicians, Latins, and Egyptians, and spacious Greece, and nations many more of Persians and Galatians, and all Asia transgressing the immortal God's pure law which they were under. Therefore on all men will the immortal put bane, famine, pains, groans, war, and pestilence, and mournful woes, because they would not honor piously the immortal sire of all men, but revered and worshipped idols made with hands, which things mortals themselves will cast down and for shame conceal in clefts of rocks, when a young king, the seventh of Egypt, shall rule his own land, reckoned from the dominion of the Greeks, which countless Macedonian men shall rule. And there shall come from Asia a great king, a fiery eagle, who with foot and horse shall cover all the land, cut up all things, and fill all things with evils. 
you will cast the Egyptian kingdom down, and taking off all its possessions carry them away over the spacious surface of the sea. And then shall they before the mighty God, the King Immortal, bend the fair white knee on the much nourishing earth, and all the works made with hands shall fall by a flame of fire. And then will God bestow great joy on men, for land and trees and countless flocks of sheep their genuine fruit to men shall offer, wine and the sweet honey and white milk and wheat, which is for mortals of all things the best. But thou, O mortal, full of various wiles, do not delay and loiter, but do thou, tossed to and fro, turn and propitiate God. Offer to God your hecatombs of bulls and firstling lambs and goats as times revolve. But him propitiate the immortal God, if haply he show mercy, for he is the only God, and other there is none. And honor justice, and oppress no man, for these things the immortal doth enjoin on miserable men. But do thou heed the cause of the wrath of the mighty God, when on all mortals there shall come the height of pestilence, and conquered they shall meet a fearful judgment, and king shall seize king, and wrest his land away and nations bring ruin on nations, and lords plunder tribes, and chiefs all flee into another land, and the land change its men. The foreign rule ravage all Hellas, and drain the rich land of its wealth, and to strife among themselves, because of gold and silver, they shall come. The love of gain, and evil shepherdess, will be for cities, in a foreign land, and they shall all be without burial, and vultures and wild beasts of earth shall spoil their flesh. And when these things are brought to pass, vast earth shall waste the relics of the dead, and all unsown shall it be, and unplowed, proclaiming sad the filth of men defiled many lengths of time in the revolving years, and shields and javelins and all sorts of arms. Nor shall the forest wood be cut for fire, and then shall God send from the east a king, who shall make all earth cease from evil war, killing some, others binding with strong oaths. And he will not by his own counsels do all these things, but obey the good decrees of God the Almighty. And with goodly wealth, with gold and silver and purple ornament, the temple of the mighty God again shall be weighed down, and the full-bearing earth and the sea shall be filled full of good things. And kings against each other shall begin to hold ill will, in heart abetting evils. Envy is not a good to wretched men. But again, kings of nations on this land shall rush in masses, bringing on themselves destruction. For they'll purpose to despoil the great God's temple and the noblest men. What time they reach the land, polluted kings shall set round the city each his throne and have his people that obey not God. And then shall God speak with a mighty voice to all rude people of an empty mind, and judgment from the mighty God shall come upon them, and they shall all be destroyed by his immortal arm. And fiery swords shall fall front heaven on earth, and great bright lights shall come down flaming in the midst of men. And in those days shall earth, all mother, reel by his immortal arm, and shoals of fish in the deep sea, and all wild beasts of earth, and countless tribes of winged fowl, and all the souls of men and every sea, shall tremble before the face of the Immortal One, and there shall be dismay. High mountain peaks and monstrous hills shall be asunder break, and to all shall dark Erebus appear, and misty gorges in the lofty hills shall be full of the dead, and rocks shall stream with blood, and every torrent fill the plain and well-built walls of evil-minded men shall all fall to the earth, since they knew not the law nor judgment of the mighty God, but with a senseless soul all hurried on against the temple, and raised up their spears. And God shall judge all by war, and by sword, and by fire, and by overwhelming storm, and brimstone there shall be from heaven, and stones, and great and grievous hail, and death shall come upon the quadrupeds, and then shall they know God, the immortal, who performs these things, and wailing, and upon the boundless earth shall be at once a shout of perishing men, and all the unholy shall be bathed in blood, and earth herself shall also drink the blood of the perishing, and beasts be gorged with flesh. And all these things the great eternal God himself bade me proclaim, and that shall not be unaccomplished, 
or be unfulfilled. Whatever only in my heart he put, for truthful is God's spirit in the world. But children of the mighty God shall all again around the temple live in peace, rejoicing in those things which he shall give, who is creator, righteous judge, and king. For he himself, great, present far and wide, shall be a shelter, as on all sides round a wall of flaming fire, and they shall be in cities and in country without war. For not the hand of evil war, but rather the immortal shall himself be their defender, and the hand of the Holy One. And then shall all the islands and the cities tell how much the immortal God loves those men. For all things help them in conflict, and deliver them heaven, and divinely fashioned sun and moon. And in those days shall earth, all mother, reel. Sweet word shall they send from their mouths in hymns. Come falling on the earth, let us all pray, the immortal King and great eternal God. To the temple let its procession go, since he alone is Lord, and let us all meditate on the law of God most high, which is most righteous of all laws on earth. And from the path of the immortal we have wandered, and with senseless soul we honor works made by hand, and wooden images of dead men. These things, souls of faithful melt, shall cry out. Come, having at the house of God fallen on our faces, let us with our hymns make joy to God the Father at our homes, supplied through all our land with arms of foes, seven lengths of time in the revolving years, even shields and helmets and all sorts of arms, and a great store of bows and arrows barbed, for forest wood shall not be cut for, but wretched Hellas. Stop thy arrogance and be wise, and entreat the immortal one magnanimous, and be upon thy guard. Send now against this city yet again the people inconsiderate, who are come out of the holy land of the mighty one. Do not move, Camarina, for tis better she be unmoved, a leopard from the lair, do thou not let an evil meet with thee. But keep off, do not hold within thy breast an arrogant and overbearing soul, ready for mighty contest. And serve God the mighty, that thou mayest share those things. And when that fated day shall reach its end, and judgment of the immortal God shall come to mortals, judgment great and power shall come upon men. For all Mother Earth shall yield to mortals best fruit boundless, wheat, wine, oil, also from heaven a delightful drink of honey and trees shall give their fruit, and fatted sheep and cattle there shall be, young lambs and kids of goats. Earth shall break forth with sweet springs of white milk, and of good things the cities shall be full and fat the fields. Nor sort nor uproar shall be on the earth, no more shall earth groan heavily and quake. Nor shall war longer be on earth, nor drought, nor famine, nor the fruit-destroying hail. But great peace shall be upon all the earth, and king to king be friend until the end of the age. And over all earth, common law will the immortal in the starry heaven perfect for men, touching whatever things have been by miserable mortals done. For he alone is God, there is no other. And the stern rage of men he'll burn with fire. But change entirely the thoughts in thy heart, and flee unrighteous worship. Serve the one who liveth, guard against adultery and deeds of lewdness. Thine own offspring rear, and do not murder. For the immortal one is angry with him who in these things sins. And then a kingdom over all mankind shall he raise up for ages, who once gave holy law to the pious, unto whom he pledged to open every land, the world and portals of the blessed and all joys, and mind immortal and eternal bliss. And out of every land unto the house of the great God shall they bring frankincense and gifts, and there shall be no other house to be inquired of by men yet to be, but what God gave for faithful men to honor. For mortal temple of the mighty God shall call it, and all pathways of the plain, and rough hills, and high mountains, and wild waves of the deep shall be easy in those days for crossing and for sailing. For all, Peace on the land of the good shall come, and sword shall prophets of the mighty God remove, for they are judges and the righteous kings of mortals. And there shall be righteous wealth among mankind, for of the mighty God this is the judgment and also the power. Be of good cheer, O maiden, and be glad, for he who made the heaven and earth 
gave thee joy in thy age, and he will dwell in thee, and thine shall be immortal, and wolves and lambs shall in the mountains feed on grass together, and with kids shall leopards graze, and bears shall lodge among the pasturing calves, and the carnivorous lion shall eat chaff at the manger like the cow, and little children in bonds shall lead them, for he will make beasts helpless on earth. With babes shall fall asleep serpents along with asps and do no harm, for over them shall be the hand of God. Now tell I thee a sign of exceeding clear, that thou mayest know when the end of all things on earth shall be, when in the starry heaven swords shall by night point straight toward west and east. Straightway shall there be also from the heaven a cloud of dust borne forth to all the earth. And the sun's brightness in the midst of heaven shall be eclipsed, and the moon's beams appear and come again on earth. By drops of blood distilling from the rocks a sign shalt be. And in the cloud shalt ye behold a war of foot and horse, like the chase of wild beasts in the dense fog. This end of all things God shall consummate, whose dwelling is in heaven, but all must sacrifice to the great King. These things I show to thee, I who madly left the long walls of Assyrian Babylon for Hellas, to proclaim to all the wrath of God, fire sent, and that I might to mortals prophecy of mysteries divine. And men shall say in Hellas that I am of foreign land, of Erythrae born, shameless. Others say that I am a Sibyl, born of mother Circe and father Nostos, raving mad and false. But at that time when all things come to pass, ye shall remember me, and no one more shall call me mad, the great God's prophetess. For he showed me what happened formerly to my ancestors, what things were the first those God made known to me, and in my mind did God put all things to be afterwards, that I might prophesy of things to come, and things that were, and tell them unto men. For when the world was deluged with a flood of waters, and one man of good repute alone was left, and in a wooden house sailed over the waters with the beasts and birds, in order that the world might be refilled, I was his son's bride, and was of his race, to whom the first things happened, and the last were all made known. And thus from mine own mouth, let all these truthful things remain declared. Book 4 People of boastful Asia and of Europe, hear how much, all too true, I am about, through a month many-toned, from my great hall to prophecy. No oracle am I of lying Phoebus, whom vain men called God, and further falsified by calling Seer, but of the mighty God, whom hands of men formed not like speechless idols carved of stone. For he is not for his abode a stone most dumb and toothless to a temple drawn, of immortals a dishonor very sore. For he may not be seen from earth, nor measured by mortal eyes, nor formed by mortal hand. He, looking down at once on all, is seen, himself by no one. His are murky night, and day, and sun, and stars, and moon, and seas with fish, and land, and rivers, and the month of spring's perennial, creatures meant for life, and rains at once producing fruit of field, and tree, and vine, and oil. This God, a whip, struck through my heart within to make me tell truly to men what things now have befallen and how much shall befall them yet again from the first generation to the eleventh. For he himself, by bringing them to pass, will prove all things. But do thou in all things, O people, to the Sibyl give all ear, who pours from hallowed mouth a truthful voice. Blessed of men shall they be on the earth, as many as shall love the mighty God, offering him praise before they drink and eat, trusting in piety. When they behold temples and altars, figures of dumb stones, stone images and statues made with hands, polluted with the blood of living things and sacrifices of four-footed beasts, they will reject them all, and they will look to the great glory of one God and not commit presumptuous murder, nor dispose of stolen gain, which things most horrid are, nor shameful longing for another's bed have they, nor vile and hateful lust of males. Their manner, piety, and character shall other men that love a shameless life not ever imitate. 
but mocking them with jest and joke like babes in senselessness, they'll falsely charge to them as many deeds blameful and wicked as they do themselves. For slow is the whole race of humankind to believe, but when judgment of the world and mortals comes, which God himself shall bring judging at once the impious and the pious, then indeed shall he send the ungodly back to lower darkness, and then they shall know how much impiety they wrought. But the pious shall still remain upon the fruitful land, God giving to them breath and life and grace. But these things, all in the tenth generation, shall come to pass. And now what things shall be from the first generation, those I'll tell. First, over all mortals shall Assyrians rule, and for six generations hold the power of the world. From the time the God of heaven being wroth against the cities and all men, see with a bursting deluge covered earth. Them shall the Medes overpower, but on the throne for two generations only shall exult, in which times those events shall come to pass. Dark night shall come at the mid-hour of day, and from the heaven the stars and circling moon shall disappear, and earth in tumult shaken by a great earthquake shall throw many cities and works of men headlong, and from the deep they shall peer out the islands of the sea. But when the great Euphrates shall with blood be surging, then shall there be also set between the Medes and Persians dreadful strife in battle, and the Medes shall fall and fly neath Persian spears beyond the mighty water of Tigris. And the Persian power shall be greatest in all the world, and they shall have one generation of most prosperous rule. And there shall be as many evil deeds as men shall wish away, the din of war and murders and disputes and banishments and overthrow of towers and waste of cities, when Hellas, very glorious, shall sail over broad Hellespont, and shall convey to Phrygia sorrow, and to Asia doom. And unto Egypt, land of many furrows, shall sorry famine come, and barrenness shall during twenty circling years prevail, what time the Nile, corn nourisher, shall hide his dark waves somewhere underneath the earth. And there shall come from Asia a great king bearing a spear, with ships innumerable, and he shall walk the wet paths of the deep, and shall sail after he has cut the mount of lofty summit. Him, a fugitive from battle fearful, Asia shall receive. And Sicily, the wretched, shall a stream of powerful fire set all aflame, while Etna, her flame disgorges. And in the deep chasm down shall the mighty city Croton fall, and strife shall be in Hellas. They shall rage against each other, cast down many cities, and fighting make an end of many men. But equally balanced is the strife with both. But when the race of mortal men shall come to the tenth generation, also then upon the Persians shall a servile yoke and terror be. But when the Macedonians shall boast the scepter, there shall be for Thebes an evil conquest from behind, and Carians shall dwell in Tyre, and Tyrians be destroyed, and Babylon, great to see but small to fight, shall stand with walls that were in vain hopes built. In Bactria, Macedonians shall dwell. But those from Susa and from Bactria shall all into the land of Hellas flee. It shall take place among those yet to be, when silver eddying Paramus his banks overpouring to the sacred isle shall come, and Sibira shall fall and Sisychus, when, earth being shaken by earthquakes, cities fall, and sand shall hide all Samos under banks, and Delos visible no more, but things of Delos shall all be visible, and to Rhodes shall come evil last, but greatest. The Macedonian power shall not abide, but from the west a great Italian war shall flourish, under which the world shall bear a servile yoke, and the Italians serve. And thou, O wretched Corinth, thou shalt look some time upon thy conquest, and thy tower, O Carthage, shall press lowly on the ground. Wretched Laodicea, thee some time shall earthquake lay low, casting headlong down, but thou, a city firmly set, again shalt stand. O Lycia, Myra, beautiful, thee never shall the agitated earth set fast. But falling headlong down on earth shalt thou, in manner like an alien, pray to flee away into another land. When sometime the dark water of the sea with thunders and earthquakes, 
shall stop the din of Patara for its impieties. Also for thee, Armenia, there remains a slavish fate, and there shall also come to Sulaima an evil blast of war from Italy, and God's great temple spoil. But when these, trusting folly, shall cast off their piety and murders consummate around the temple, then front Italy a mighty king shall like a runaway slave flee over the Euphrates stream unseen, unknown, who shall sometime dare loathsome guilt of matricide, and many other things, having confidence in his most wicked hands, and many for the throne with blood, Rome's soil while he flees over Parthian land. And out of Syria shall come Rome's foremost man, who, having burned the temple of Sulaima, and having slaughtered many of the Jews, shall destruction on their great broad land, and then too an earthquake overthrow both Salamis and Paphos, when dark water shall dash over Cyprus, washed by many a wave. But when, from deep cleft of Italian land, fire shall come flashing forth in the broad heaven, and many cities burn, and men destroy, and much black ashes shall fill the great sky, and small drops like red earth shall fall from heaven, then know the anger of the God of heaven, for that they without reason shall destroy the nation of the pious. And then strife, awakened of war, shall come to the west, shall also come to the fugitive of Rome, bearing a great spear, having marched across Euphrates with his many myriads. O wretched Antioch, they shall call thee no more a city, when around their spears, because of thy own follies, thou shalt fall. And then on Skyros shall a pestilence and dreadful battle din destruction bring. Alas, alas, O wretched Cyprus, thee shall a broad wave of the sea cover, thee tossed on high by the whirling stormy winds. And into Asia there shall come great wealth, which Rome herself once, plundering, put away in her luxurious homes, and twice as much and more shall she to Asia render back, and then there shall be an excess of war. And Carian cities by Meander's waters, girded with towers and very beautiful, shall by a bitter famine be destroyed, when the Meander his dark water hides. But when piety shall perish from mankind, and faith and right be hidden in the world, fickle, and in unhallowed boldness living shall practice wanton violence, and reckless deeds, and of the pious no one shall make account, but even them all from thoughtlessness they utterly destroy, in childish folly, in their violence, exulting, and in blood holding their hands. Then know thou that God is no longer mild, but gnashing with fury and destroying all, the race of men by conflagration great. Ah, miserable mortals, change these things, nor lead the mighty God to wrath extreme. Put giving up your swords and pointed knives and homicides and wanton violence. Wash your whole body in perennial streams, and lifting up your hands to heaven, seek pardon for former deeds and expiate with praise bitter impiety. And God will give repentance. He will not destroy, and wrath will he again restrain, if in your hearts ye all will practice honored piety. But if, ill disposed, ye obey me not, but with a fondness for strange lack of sense, receive all these things with an evil ear. There shall be over all the world a fire, and greatest omen with sword and with trumpet at sunrise. The whole world shall hear the roar and mighty sound, and he shall burn all earth and destroy the whole race of men, and the cities and the rivers and the sea. All things he'll burn, and it shall be black dust. But when now all things shall have been reduced to dust and ashes, and God shall have calmed the fire unspeakable which he lit up. The bones and ashes of men God himself again will fashion, and he will again raise mortals up, even as they were before. And then shall be the judgment, at which God himself as judge shall judge the world again, and all who sin with impious hearts, even them, shall he again hide under mounds of earth, dark Tartarus and Stygian Gehenna. But all who shall be pious shall again live on the earth, and shall inherit there the great immortal gods, unwasting bliss, God giving spirit life and joy to them, the pious, and they all shall see themselves beholding the sun's sweet and cheering light. O oh, happy on the earth shall be that man. Book 5 
But come now, hear of me the mournful time of sons of Latium. And first of all, after the kings of Egypt were destroyed, and the like earth had downwards borne them all, and after Pelus's townsmen, under whom the whole east and the rich west were cast down, whom Babylon dishonored and stretched out for Philip, a dead body, not of Zeus of Ammon, not true things were prophesied. And after that one of the race and blood of King Assaracus, who came from Troy, even he who cleft the violence of fire, and after many lords, and after men to Ares dear, and after the young babes, the children of the beast that feeds on sheep, the very first lord shall be, who shall sum twice ten with the first letter of his name, in wars exceeding powerful shall be, and he shall have the initial sign of ten, and in like manner after him to reign is one who has the alphabet's first letter. Before him Thrace and Sicily shall crouch. Then Memphis, Memphis cast headlong to earth by reason of the cowardice of rulers, and of a woman unenslaved who falls upon the wave. And laws will he ordain for peoples, and put all things under him. But after a long time shall he transmit his power unto another, who shall have three hundred for his first initial sign, and of a river the beloved name. And the Persians he shall rule, and Babylon. And then shall he smite Medeans with his spear. Then shall one rule who has the initial sign of the number three. And then shall be a lord, who shall for first initial have twice ten, and he shall come to ocean's utmost water, and by Ausonia cleave the refluent tide, and one whose mark is fifty shall be lord, a dreadful serpent breathing grievous war, who sometimes stretching forth his hands shall make an end of his own race, and stir all things, acting the athlete, driving chariots, putting to death and daring countless things, and he shall cleave the mountain of two seas, and sprinkle it with gore, but out of sight shall also vanish the destructive man. Then making himself equal unto God shall he return, but God will prove him naught. And after him shall three kings be destroyed by one another. Then a great destroyer of pious men shall come, whom seven times ten shall point out clearly. But from him a son, whom the first letter of three hundred proves, shall take the power. And after him shall be a ruler of the initial sign of four, a life destroyer. Then a reverend man of the number fifty, next succeeding him who has the first mark of the initial sign three hundred, shall a Celtic mountaineer into the strife of battle pressing on escape not fate unseemly, but shall be worn weary unto death. Him, foreign dust, but dust that of Nemea's flower has name, shall hide a corpse. And after him shall rule another man with silver helmet decked, and unto him shall be the name of a sea, and he shall be a man the best of all, and in all things discreet. And upon thee, thou best of all, above all, dark-haired one, and upon thy shoots shall be all these days. After him three shall rule, but the third one shall at a late time hold the royal power. Worn out am I, thrice miserable one, sister of Isis, to lay up in heart an evil message and an inspired song of oracles. First, Maenades shall dart around thy much lamented temple's steps, and thou shalt be in evil hands that day, when the Nile sometimes shall fill the whole land of Egypt, even to sixteen cubits deep. It shall wash all the land, and water it for mortals, and the pleasure of the land shall be still, and the glory of her face. Memphis, thou shalt over Egypt wail, for of old ruling mightily the land, thou shalt become poor, so that out of heaven the thunderer shall himself with great voice cry, O mighty Memphis, who didst boast of old over craven mortals greatly, thou shalt wail full of pain and all hapless, so that thou thyself shalt the eternal God perceive immortal in the clouds. Where among men is now thy mighty pride? Because thou didst against my God anointed children rave, and didst urge evil forward on good men, thou shalt for such things suffer penalty in some like manner. No more openly for thee shall there be right among the blessed. Fallen from the stars, thou shalt not rise to heaven. Now these things unto Egypt God bade me speak out for the last time, when men shall be utterly evil. But they labor hard, 
evil men, evil things awaiting, wrath of the immortal thunderer in heaven, worshipping stones and beasts instead of God, and also fearing many things besides which have no speech, nor mind, nor power to hear, which things it is not right for me to mention, each one an idol formed by mortal hands, of their own labors and presumptuous thoughts did men receive gods made of wood and stone and brass and gold and silver. Foolish too, without life and dumb, molten in the fire, they made them, vainly trusting such things. The Mois and Zeus are in sore distress and smitten in the hall of Heracles, and Zeus and Hermes, king, and as for thee, O Alexandria, famed nourisher of cities, war shall not leave, nor plague, for thy pride thou shalt pay as many things as thou before didst. Silent shalt thou be a long age, and the day of thy return. No more for thee shall flow luxurious drink, for there shall come a Persian on thy dale, and like hail shall he all the land destroy, and artful men with blood and corpses by sacred altars one of barbarous mind, strong, full of blood and raging senselessly, with countless numbers rushing to destruction. And then shalt thou, in cities very rich, be very weary. Falling on the earth, all Asia shall wail on account of gifts, crowning her head, with which she was by thee delighted. But as he himself obtained the Persian land by lot, he shall make war, and killing every man destroy all life, so that there shall remain for wretched mortals a third part. But with nimble leap shall he himself speed from the west, and all the land besiege and waste. But when he shall possess the height of power and odious reverence, he shall come, wishing to destroy the city even of the blessed. And a certain king sent forth from God against him shall destroy all mighty kings and bravest men, and thus shall judgment by the immortal come to men. Alas! Alas for thee, unhappy heart! Why dost thou move me to declare these things, the painful rule of Egypt over many? Go to the east, to the races of the Persians, who lack in understanding, and show them that which is now, and that which is to be. The river of Euphrates shall bring on a deluge, and it shall destroy the Persians, Iberians, and Babylonians, and the Mesagetae that relish war, and trust in bows. All Asia, fire ablaze, shall rise to the isles, beam brightly. Pergamos, reverend of old, shall perish from its base, and Patane, among men, shall appear all desolate. All Lesbos shall sink deep into the deep, and thus shall be destroyed. Smyrna, whirled down her cliffs, shall wail aloud. She that was once revered and given a name shall perish utterly. Bithynians shall over their own country then reduced to ashes, wail, and over great Syria, and over Phoenicia, that bass many tribes. Alas, alas for thee, O Lycia! How many evils does the sea contrive against thee, mounting up of its own will upon the painful land? And it shall dash with evil earthquake, and with bitter streams on the rough Lycian land that once breathed perfume. And there shall be for Phrygia fearful wrath, because of sorrow for which Rhea came, mother of Zeus, and there continued long. The sea shall overthrow the centaur race, and barbarous nation, and beneath the earth shall tear away the Lepathian land. The river of deep eddies and deep flow, Peneus, shall destroy Thessalian land, snatching men from the earth. Eridanus, pretending once to bear the forms of beasts, Hellas, thrice wretched, shall the poets weep when one from Italy shall smite the neck of the Isthmus, mighty king of mighty Rome, a man made equal to God, whom, they say, Zeus himself and the august Hera bore, he, courting by his voice all musical applause for his sweet songs, shall put to death with his own wretched mother many men. From Babylon shall flee the fearful Lord, and shameless whom all mortals and best men abhor, for he slew many and laid hands upon the womb, Against his wives he sinned, and of men stained with blood he had been formed. And he shall come to monarchs of the Medes and Persians, first whom he loved, and to whom he brought renown, while with those wicked men he lurked against the nation not desired, and on the temple made by God he seized, and citizens and people going in, of whom I justly sang the praise, 
he burned. For when this man appeared, the whole creation was shaken, and kings perished, and yet power remained among them, and they quite destroyed the mighty city and the righteous people. But when the fourth year, a great star shall shine, which alone shall the whole earth overpower because of honor, which was first assigned to Lord Poseidon. Then a great star shall come from heaven into the dreadful sea and burn the vast deep, and Babylon itself, and the land of Italy, because of which there perished many holy, faithful men among the Hebrews and a people true. Thou shalt be among evil mortals made to suffer evils, but thou shalt remain all desolate, whole ages by thyself, hating thy soil. For thou didst have desire for sorcery, adulteries were with thee, and lawless, carnal intercourse with boys. Thou evil city, womanish, unjust, ill-fated above all. Alas, alas, thou city of the Latin land, unclean in all things. Maned, having joy in snakes, over thy banks a widow shalt thou sit, and the river Tiber shall lament for thee. His consort thee, who hast a blood-stained heart and impious soul. Didst thou not understand what God can do, and what he doth devise? But thou saidest, I am alone, and me no one shall sack. But now shall God, whoever is, thee and all thine destroy, and in that land no longer shall thy ensign yet remain, as of old when the mighty God received thy honors. Stay, O lawless one, alone, and mixed with burning fire inhabit thou in Hades the Tartarian lawless land. And now again, O Egypt, I bewail thy blind delusion. Memphis, first in toils, thou shalt be filled up with the dead. In thee the pyramids shall speak a ruthless sound. O Python, who is justly called of old the double city, be for ages silent, so that thou mayest cease from wickedness. Reckless in evils, treasury of toils, much wailing, maned, suffering, dire ills, much weeping, thou a widow shalt remain through all time. Thou didst full of years become while thou alone wast ruling over the world. But when the white dress Berea round herself shall put on over that which is defiled, would that I neither were nor had been born. O Thebes, where is thy great strength? A fierce man shall slay the people, but thou, wretched one, grasping thy dusky dress, shalt wail alone, and thou shalt make atonement for all things which thou aforetime with a shameless soul didst perpetrate. They also shall behold a mourning on account of lawless deeds. And a mighty man of the Ethiopians shall overthrow Sain. By their might shall swarthy Indians occupy Teucera. Pentapolis, a man of mighty strength, shall burn thee whole. All tearful Libya, who shall explain thy follies? And Serene, of mortals, who shall pitiably weep for thee? Thou shalt not even till the time of thy destruction cease thy hateful wail. Among the Britons, and among the Gauls, rich in gold, ocean shall be roaring loud, filled with much blood, for evil things did they unto God's children, when a king of the Sidonians, a Phoenician, led a mighty Gallic host from Syria. And he shall slaughter thee, thyself, Ravenna, and unto slaughter shall he lead the way. O Indians and great-hearted Ethiops, together fear, for when these the course of Capricorn and Taurus and the twins shall wind about the middle of the heaven, Virgo then rising, and about his front fastening a belt, the sun shall lead all heaven. There shall be moving downwards to the earth, a mighty conflagration, high in air, and a new nature in the warlike stars, so that the whole land of the Ethiops shall perish in the midst of fire and groans. And weep thou, Corinth, the destruction sad which is ill thee. For when, with pliant threads, the fates three sisters, spinning shall aloft lead him who flees by guile against the voice of the Isthmus, until all shall look at him who once cut out the rock with ductile brass, he also shall destroy and smite thy land, as it hath been appointed. For to him God gave strength to accomplish that which could no earlier of all the kings together. And first, with sickle cleaving off the roots from three heads, he shall give food in excess to others, so that kings unclean shall eat the flesh of parents. Or unto all men, 
Slaughter and terrors are laid up in store because of the great city, and just people saved through all time, whom providence held high. O thou unstable one, and ill-advised, by evil fate surrounded, for mankind both a beginning and great end of toil, of suffering creation, and of part restored again, thou leader insolent of evils, and for men a great curse, who of mortals wished for thee? Who has not been embittered from within? Cast down ill, the a king his honored life lost. Evilly hast thou disposed all things and washed away all that is fair, and by thee have changed the world's fair folds. In strife with us, perhaps, thou hast brought forward these unstable things. And how dost thou say, I will thee persuade? And, if in anything thou blame me, speak. There was once among men the sun's bright light, the prophet's common ray being spread abroad. Speech dripping honey, fair drink for all men, appeared and grew, and day arose in all. Because of this, thou narrow-minded one, leader of greatest evils, both a sword and grief shall come in that day. For mankind, both a beginning and great end of toil, of suffering creation, and of part restored again. Hear, O thou curse of men, the bitter oracle intolerable. But when the Persian land shall keep away from war and plague and groaning, in that day a race divine of blessed heavenly Jews shall offer prayer, who shall dwell round about God's city in mid-portions of the land. And even as far as Joppa, building round a great wall, they shall carry it aloft unto the gloomy clouds. No more shall trumpet sound battle din, nor by a foe's mad hands shall they be cut off, but they shall set up their trophies for an age of evil men. And one shall come again from heaven, a man preeminent, whose hands on fruitful tree, by far the noblest of the Hebrews stretched, who at one time did make the sun stand still when he spoke with fair word and holy lips. No longer vex thy soul within thy breast, by reason of the sword, rich child of God, flower longed for by him only, goodly light and noble branch, a scion much beloved, pleasant Judea, city beautiful inspired by hymns. No more shall unclean foot of Greeks keep revel round about thy land who held within their breast a lawless mind. But thee shall glorious children honor much, and be expert in songs and holy tongues, with sacrifices of all kinds and prayers honored of God. All who endure the toils of small affliction and the just shall have more that is altogether beautiful. But the wicked, who to heaven sent lawless speech, shall cease their speaking one against another, and hide themselves until the world be changed. And there shall be a rain of gleaming fire from the clouds, and no more shall mortals reap the fair corn from the earth, and all things unsown and unplowed, until mortal men shall know the Lord of all things, the immortal God always existing, and no more revere mortal things, neither dogs nor vultures' nests, and what things Egypt taught to magnify with dumb months and dull lips, but all these things the holy land of the only pious men shall bring forth. From the honey-dripping rock a stream, and from a spring ambrosial milk shall flow for all the just. For in one God, one Father, who alone is glorious, having great piety and faith, they hoped. But why does the wise mind grant me these things? And now thee, wretched Asia, piteously I mourn, and the race of Ionians and Carians and Lydians rich in gold. Alas, alas for thee, O Sardis! And alas for Trellis, much beloved, alas, alas, Laodicea, city, beautiful, thus shalt thou be by earthquakes overthrown and ruined, and be also changed to dust. And to Asia gloomy, Artemis's temple fixed at Ephesus, by chasms and earthquakes come headlong down, sometime into the dreadful sea, as storms overwhelm ships. And upturned Ephesus shall wail aloud, lament beside her banks, and for her temple search, which is no more. And then incensed shall God the imperishable, who dwells on high, hurl thunderbolts from heaven down on the head of him that is impure, and in the place of winter there shall be in that day summer, and to mortal men shall then be great woe, for the thunderer shall utterly destroy all shameless men, and with his thunders and with lightning flames and blazing thunderbolts men of ill will 
and thus shall he destroy the impious ones, so that there shall remain upon the earth dead bodies more in number than the sand. For Smyrna also, weeping her Lysurgis, shall come unto the gates of Ephesus, and she herself shall perish even more. And foolish Sime, with her inspired streams cast down by hands of godless men unjust and lawless, shall to heaven not so much as a word utter, but she shall remain dead in Simean streams. And then shall they together weep, awaiting evil things. Sime's rough populace and shameless tribe, having a sign, shall know for what they toiled. And then, when they shall have bewailed their land, reduced to ashes by Eridanus, shall Lesbos be forever overthrown. Alas, Corsera, beautiful city, alas for thee, cease from thy revelry. Thou also, Heropolis, sole land with riches mixed, what thou hast longed to have, thou shalt have, even a land of many tears, since thou wast angry towards a land besides Thermodon streams, rock-clinging Tripolis, beside the waters of Meander, thee shall by the nightly surges under shore God's wrath and foresight utterly destroy. Take me not, willing, to the neighboring land of Phoebus. Sometime shall a thunderbolt, dainty Miletus, from above destroy, because she seized on Phoebus' crafty song and the wise care and prudent plan of men. Father of all, be gracious to the land of Judah, well-fed, fruit abounding, great, in order that thy judgments we may see. For thou, O God, in kindness didst regard this land first, that it might appear to be thy gracious gift unto all mortal men, and to hold fast what God put in their charge. The works thrice wretched of the Thracians I yearn to see, and wall between two seas trailed in the dust along beneath the mist, even like a river for the swimming fish. O wretched Hellespont, some time a child of the Assyrians shall throw a yoke across thee. Battle of the Thracians comes, and shall despoil thy strength. And there shall rule over the land of Macedonia a king of Egypt, and a barbarous clime shall waste the strength of captains. Lydians and the Galatians, and Pamphylians with the Pisidians, all equipped for war, shall in a mass bring evil strife to pass. Thrice wretched Italy, then shalt remain all desolate, unwept in blooming land, by deadly sting to perish utterly. And sometime, high in the broad heaven above, like thunder roaring, shall God's voice be heard, and the unwasting flames of the sun himself shall be no more, nor shall the brilliant light of the moon again be in the latest time, when God shall be the ruler. And dark gloom shall be over all the earth, and blinded men and evil beasts and woe. That day shall be a long time, so that men shall see that God himself is Lord, the overseer of all, in front of heaven. And then will he himself not pity hostile men, who sacrifice their herds of lambs and sheep and calves and goats, and bellowing golden-horned bulls, offering them to lifeless Hermes and to gods of stone. But let the law of wisdom be your guide, and the glory of the righteous. Lest sometime the imperishable God, incensed, destroy each race of men and shameless tribe of life, it doth behoove them faithfully to love the Father, the wise God, whoever is. In the last time, at the turning of the moon, there shall be raging through the world a war, and carried on with cunning and in guile, and from the limits of the earth shall come fleeing and pondering sharp things in his mind, a matricidal man, who every land shall overpower and over all things rule and see all things more wisely than all men, and that for whose sake he himself was slain shall he seize forthwith. And he shall destroy many men and great tyrants, and shall burn all of them, as none other ever did. And he shall raise up them that are afraid for emulation's sake. And from the west much war shall come to men, and blood shall flow downhill till it becomes deep eddying streams. And in the plains of Macedonia shall wrath distill and give help from the west, but to the king, destruction. And a wind of winter then shall blow upon the earth, and the plain be filled with evil war again. For fire shall rain down from the heavenly plains on mortals, and there with blood, water, flash of lightning, murky darkness, night in heaven, and waste in war and over the slaughter mist. And these together shall destroy all kings and noblest men. Thus shall be made to cease, then, the destruction pitiable of war. And no more shall one fight with swords or iron, or even darts, 
which things shall not again be lawful, but wise people shall have peace who were left, having made proof of wickedness, that they might at the last be filled with joy. Ye matricides, leave off your impudence and evil working boldness, who of old provided lawlessly lewd couch with boys, and placed as harlots maidens pure before in brothels by assault and punishment, and by much laboring in decency. For in thee mother with her child did hold unlawful intercourse, and daughter was with her own father wedded as a bride. And in thee kings have their ill-fated mouth polluted, and in thee have wicked men found couch with cattle. Be in silence hushed, thou wicked city, all bewailed, possessed of revelry. For by thee virgin maids shall care no longer for the fire divine of sacred wood that fondly nourisheth. Before thee was a much-loved house of old, extinguished, when I saw the second house cast headlong down and overwhelmed with fire by an unholy hand, house ever flourishing, God's watchful temple brought forth of his saints and being always indestructible by the soul hoped for and the body itself. For not without the rites of burial shall one praise God out of the unseen earth, nor did wise workmen make a stone by them, nor had he fear of gold, cheat of the world and of souls, but the mighty Father, God, of all things God inspired, did he revere with holy offerings and fair hecatombs. But now an unseen and unholy king with multitude great and with men renowned rose into power and cast his dwelling down and let it go unbuilt. But he himself, when he set foot on the immortal land, destroyed the ground. And such a sign no more was wrought upon men, so that it appeared that others the great city should destroy. For there came from the heavenly plains a man, one blessed, with a scepter in his hand which God gave him, and he ruled all things well, and unto all the good did he restore the riches which the earlier men had seized. And many cities with much fire he took from their foundations, and he set on fire the towns of mortals who before did evil, and he did make that city, which God loved, more radiant than stars and sun and moon, and he set order, and a holy house incarnate made, pure, very fair, and formed in many stades, a great and boundless tower touching the clouds themselves, and seen by all, so that all holy and righteous men might see the glory of the eternal God, a sight that has been longed for. Rising sun and setting day hymned forth the praise of God. For there are then no longer fearful things for wretched mortals, nor adulteries and lawless love of boys, nor homicide, nor tumult, but a righteous strife in all. It is the last time of the saints when God accomplisheth these things, high thunderer, founder of temple most magnificent. Alas, alas for thee, O Babylon, for golden throne and golden sandal famed, kingdom of many years and of the world, sole ruler, who was great in olden time and city of all cities, Thou no more shalt lie in golden mountains and by streams of the Euphrates. Thou shalt be laid low by rout of earthquake. But the Parthians dire caused thee to stiffer all things. Hold thou fast thy unknown speech, impure Chaldean race. Ask not nor be concerned how thou shalt lead the Persians or how thou shalt rule the Medes. For on account of thy supremacy which thou hadst, sending hostages to Rome and serving Asia, thou that formerly didst also think thyself a queen, shalt come unto the judgment of antagonists, because of whom thou hast suffered baneful things, and thou shalt give instead of crooked words bitter vexation to the enemies, and in the last time shall the sea be dry, and ships no longer sail to Italy, and Asia the great then, all hapless, shall be water, and then Crete shall be a plain, and Cyprus shall endure great misery, and Paphos shall bewail a dreadful fate, so that even Salamis, great city, shall be seen to undergo great misery, and now the dry land shall be fruitless sand upon the shore. And locusts, not a few, shall utterly destroy the Cyprian land. Look at Tyre, doomed mortals, ye shall weep. Phoenicia, dreadful wrath remains for thee, until thou to a worthless ruin fall, so that even sirens truly may lament. In the fifth generation, when the ruin of Egypt has ceased, it shall come to pass that shameless kings shall be together joined, 
and the races of Pamphylians shall encamp in Egypt, and in Macedonia, and in Asia, and among the Libyans, shall in the dust be a world-maddening war, exceeding bloody, which the king of Rome and rulers of the west shall make to cease. When wintry storm shall drop down like the snow, while frozen are great river and vast lakes, forthwith a barbarous race shall make their way into the Asian land, and shall destroy the race of dreadful Thracians, hard to quell. And then shall mortals feeding lawlessly devour their parents, being by hunger worn, and shall gulp down the entrails. And wild beasts shall devour from all houses table food, and they and birds all mortals shall devour. The ocean with dead bodies shall be filled from the river, and be red with flesh and blood of the foolish ones. Then thus a feebleness shall be on earth, so that of men the number may be seen and the measure of the women, and the dire race shall wail for myriad things at last when the sun sets to rise no more, but to remain submerged in ocean's waves. For it beheld the wickedness unclean of many mortals, and a moonless night shall be a fame around the mighty heaven and no small mist shall hide the world's ravines a second time. Then afterwards God's light shall guide the good men, who sang praise to God. Isis, thrice wretched goddess, thou alone shalt on the waters of the Nile remain, a maenad out of order on the sands of Acheron, and no longer shall remain remembrance of thee over all the earth. And also thou, Serapis, who art placed on many glistening stones, a ruin vast shalt thou in thrice unhappy Egypt lie. But those whom love of Egypt led to thee shall all lament thee badly. But who put imperishable reason in their breast, and who praised God, shall know thee to be naught. And sometimes shall a linen-vested man, a priest, say, Come, let us raise up of God a beautiful true temple. Come, let us the fearful law of our forefathers change because of which they did not understand that they were unto gods of stone and clay, making processions and religions rites. Let us turn our souls, giving praise to God, the imperishable, who himself is Father, the everlasting one, the Lord of all, the true one, the King, life-sustaining Father, the mighty God existing evermore. And then shall there a great pure temple be in Egypt, and the people made by God shall into their sacrifices bring and to them God shall give life incorrupt. But when the Ethiopians, forsaking the shameless tribes of the Tribalians, shall cultivate their Egypt, they will then begin their baseness, that the later things may all occur. For they shall overthrow the mighty temple of the Egyptian land, and God shall rain down on the earth dire wrath among them, so that all the wicked ones, and all without sense, perish. And no more shall there be any sparing in that land, because they did not keep that which God gave. I saw the threatening of the shining sun among the stars, and in the lightning flash the dire wrath of the moon. The stars travailed with battle, and God gave them up to light, for long fire flames rebelled against the sun. Lucifer, treading upon Leo's back, began the fight, and the moon's double horn changed its shape. Capricorn smote Taurus's neck, and Taurus took away from Capricorn returning day. Orion would no more abide his yoke. The lot of Gemini did Virgo change in Aries. No more shone the Pleiades. Draco disavowed his zone. Down into Leo's girdle, Pisces went. Cancer remained not, for he feared Orion. Scorpio, down on dire Leo, backwards moved. And from the sun's flame, Sirius slipped away. And the strength of the mighty shining one, Aquarius, kindled. Uranus himself was roused until he shook the warring ones, and being incensed, he hurled them down on earth. Then swiftly smitten down upon the baths of ocean, they set all the earth on fire, and the high heaven remained without a star. Book 6 The great son of the immortal famed in song, I from the heart proclaim, to whom a throne to be held fast, the Most Father gave heir. He was brought forth. Then he was raised up, according to flesh given, washed at the mouth of the River Jordan, which goes rushing on, trailing its gleaming billows. From the fire, escaping, he first shall see God's sweet spirit descending with the wings of a white dove, and a pure flower shall bloom, 
and springs be full. And he shall show the ways to men, and show the heavenly paths, and teach all with wise, and he shall come for judgment and persuade a disobedient people while he boasts, descent praiseworthy from a heavenly sire. Billows shall he tread, sickness of mankind shall he destroy, he shall raise up the dead, and many sufferings shall he drive away. And from one scrip shall be men's fill of bread, when the house of David shall bring forth a child, and in his hand the whole world, earth, heaven, sea. And he shall flash upon the earth, as once the two begotten from each other's ribs saw human form appearing. It shall be when earth shall be glad in the hope of child. But for thee only, Sodomitic land, are evil woes laid up. For thou thyself, ill-disposed, didst not apprehend thy God who mocks at mortal schemes, but from a thorn didst crown him with a crown, and fearful gall didst mingle unto insolence and spirit. This shall bring evil woes about for thee. O oh, the wood, O oh, so blessed upon which God was outstretched! The earth shall not have thee, but thou shalt look upon a heavenly house, when thou, O oh God, shalt flash thine eye of fire. Book 7 O Rhodes, thou art unhappy, for first thee, thee will I mourn, and thou shalt be the first of cities, and first shalt thou be destroyed, bereft of men, but of the means of life not wholly destitute. And thou shalt sail Delos, and be unstable on the water. Cyprus, a billow of thy gleaming sea, shall sometime thee destroy. Thee, Sicily, the fire that burns within thee shall consume. Nor heed God's terrible and foreign water, Noah, sole fugitive from all men came. Earth shall float, hills float, and even sky shall float. Everything shall be water, and all things shall be destroyed by waters, and the winds shall stand still, and the second age shall be. O Phrygia, first shalt thou flame from the crest of the water, and first in impiety thou shalt deny God himself courting favor with false gods, which shall utterly destroy thee, wretched one, while many years roll round. The hapless Ethiopians under pain, suffering things lamentable, shall by swords be smitten whilst they crouch upon the ground. Rich Egypt, never caring for her corn, which Nihilus by his seven swimming streams intoxicates, shall in intestine strife destroy and thence men unexpectedly shall drive out Apis, not the god for men. Alas, alas, Laodicea, thou, not ever seeing God, shalt lie, bold one, and over thee shall dash a wave of Lysus. He himself who was born the mighty God, who shall work many signs, shall through heaven hang an axle in the midst, and place for men a mighty terror to be seen on high, measuring a column with a mighty fire whose drops shall slay the races of mankind that have dared evils. But a common lord there shall at some time be, and then shall men propitiate God, but shall not make an end of fruitless sorrows. And through David's house shall all things come to pass, for God himself gave him the power and put it in his hand. Under his feet shall sleep his messengers, and some shall kindle fires, and some shall make rivers appear and some shall rescue towns, and some shall send forth winds. But furthermore, a grievous life shall come upon many men, entering their souls and changing human hearts. But when a new shoot shall, out of a root, put forth eyes, the creation, which to all once gave abundant food, and it shall with the times be full. But when others shall rule, a tribe of warlike Persians, bride chambers straight away, shall be terrible because of lawless deeds. For her own son will mother have his husband, son will be the ruin of his mother, and with sire shall daughter lie down, and shall put to sleep this foreign law. But to them afterwards shall Roman Ares flash from many a spear, and they shall mix much land with human blood. But then a chief of Italy shall flee from the force of the spear, but they shall leave upon the land a lance inscribed with gold, which as the signal ensign of their rule, the foremost fighters carry constantly. 
and it shall be when evil and ill-starred Ilias shall piteously compete for all a tomb, not marriage, then shall brides weep sore, because they knew not God, but always gave by kettle drums and cymbals boisterous sound. Consult the oracle, O Colophon, for a great fearful fire hangs over thee, ill-wedded Thessaly, the earth no more shall see thee, nor thy ashes, and alone escaping from the mainland, thou shalt swim. Thus, O thou wretched one, shalt thou of war be melancholy refuse, having fallen by swiftly flowing rivers and by swords. And thou, O wretched Corinth, shalt receive around thyself stern Ares, hapless one, and ye shall perish one upon another. Tyre, thou unhappy, shalt be left alone, for, made a widow by the feebleness of pious men, thou shalt be brought to naught. Ah, Kael Syria, the Phoenician men, the last hold upon whom the briny sea of Beritus, disgorging, is poured forth. O wretched one, thou didst not know thy God, who once in the month of Jordan washed himself, and the Spirit spread his wings in flight before him, who before the earth and starry heaven was actual word begotten by his Father, and by the Holy Spirit donning flesh, he quickly flew unto his father's house. And for him three towers did the mighty heaven establish, in which dwell God's noble guides, hope, piety, and reverence much desired, not having in gold or in silver joy, but in the reverential acts of men, both sacrifices and most righteous thoughts. And thou shalt sacrifice to the immortal and mighty God, August, not melting grains of frankincense and fire, nor with the sword slaying the shaggy-haired lamb, but with all who bear thy blood, take wild fowls, offer prayer, and fixing eyes on heaven, send them away. And thou shalt sprinkle water on pure fire, having cried, As the Father did beget thee, the word, Father, I sent forth a bird, swift messenger of words with holy waters, besprinkling thy baptism, O word, through which thou didst make thyself manifest in fire. Thou shalt not shut thy door, when there shall come a stranger unto thee in need to curb his hunger which comes from his poverty. But taking hold of that man, sprinkle him with water, and pray thrice. And to thy God do thou thus cry, I do not long for wealth. A suppliant I once publicly received, a suppliant. Father, thou provider, hear. When thou hast prayed, thou shalt give unto him, and the man went away thereafter. Do not afflict me, holy fear of God and righteous, as to birth pure, unenslaved, attested. Do thou, O Father, make my wretched heart stand still. To thee have I looked unto thee, the undefiled whom hands did not produce. Sardinia, weighty now, thou shalt be changed to ashes. Thou shalt be no more an isle when the tenth time shall come. Amid the waves shall sailors seek thee when thou art no more, and over thee shall kingfishers wail sad dirge. Rugged Mygdonia, beacon of the sea, hard to get out of, ages shalt thou boast, and unto ages shalt be all destroyed, with a hot wind and rave with many woes. O Celtic land, on mountain range so great, beyond impassable Alp, the deep sand shall altogether bury. Thou shalt give tribute no more, nor corn, nor pasturage. And thou from peoples ever far away shalt be all desolate and becoming thick with chill ice. Thou shalt for an outrage pay, which thou didst not perceive, unholy one. Stout-hearted Rome, thou to Olympus shalt flash lightning after Macedonian spears. But God shall make thee utterly unknown when thou wouldst to the eye seem to remain much more firm. Then to thee such things I'll cry. Perishing thou shalt then cry out and boil in pain. A second time to thee, O Rome, again a second time I am to speak. And now for thee, O wretched Syria, do I wail bitterly in pitying grief. O Thebans, ill-advised, an evil sound is over you while flutes speak out their tones. For you shall trumpet sound and evil sound, and ye shall see the entire land destroyed. Alas, alas for thee, thou wretched one! Alas, alas, thou evil-minded sea! Thou shalt be wholly eaten up of fire, and people with thy brine shalt thou destroy. 
for there shall be such raging fire on earth as flows like water, and it shall destroy the whole land. It shall set the hills on fire, shall burn the rivers and exhaust the springs. The world shall be disordered whilst mankind are perishing, and then the wretched ones, burned badly, shall look unto heaven, inwrought not with stars, but with fire. Not speedily shall they be made to perish, but dissolved from under flesh and burning in the spirit for age-long years. They shall know what God's law is always hard to put to test and not to be deceived. And then earth, seized by force, daring whatever God she did admit unto her altars, cheated, turned to smoke through the changed air, and they shall undergo much suffering, who for gain shall prophesy shameful things, nourishing the evil time. And the Hebrews who put on the shaggy skins of sheep shall prove false, in which race obtained no portion by inheritance. But taking mere words over sorrows, they are misers, who shall change their course of life and not mislead the just, who through the heart all faithfully propitiate their God. But in the third lot of revolving years, eighth, the first, shall another world appear, night shall be all, long and without light, and then shall pass around the dreadful stench of brimstone, messenger of homicides, when they shall be by night and hunger slain. Then a pure mind shall God beget in men, and shall the race establish as it was a for time. Long shall not any one deep furrow cut with round plow, nor two oxen straight guiding dip the iron down, nor vines shall be, nor ears of corn, but all shall eat together dewy manna with white teeth. And then among them God shall also be, and he shall teach them as he has taught me, the sad one. For how many evil things I did with knowledge once, and many things heedless I also wickedly performed. Countless my couches, but no marriage bond was cared for, and I, all unfaithful, brought to all a savage oath. I turned away those in need, and among the foremost went into like glen, and minded not God's word. Therefore did fire consume me, and shall gnaw. For I shall not live always, but a time of evil shall destroy me, when for me men shall beside the margin of the sea construct a tomb, and shall slay me with stones. For lying with my father, a dear son, did I present him. Smite me, smite me all, for thus shall I live and fix eyes on heaven. Book 8 God's declarations of great wrath to come in the last age upon the faithless world I make known, prophesying to all men according to their cities. From the time when the great tower fell, and the tongues of men were parted into many languages of mortals, first was Egypt's royal power established, that of Persians and of Medes, and also of the Ethiopians, and of Assyria and Babylon, then the great pride of boasting Macedon, then fifth, the famous lawless kingdom last of the Italians shall show many evils unto all mortals, and shall spend the toils of men of every land. And it shall lead the untamed kings of nations to the west, make laws for peoples, and subject all things. Late do the mills of God grind the fine flour. Fire then shall destroy all things and give back to fine dust the heads of the high-leafed hills, and of all flesh. First, cause of ills to all are covetousness and a lack of sense. For there shall be love of deceitful gold and silver. For then these did mortals choose not greater, neither light of sun nor heaven nor sea nor broad-backed earth, once all things grow, nor God who giveth all things of all things the Father, nor yet faith and piety chose they before them, of impiety a fount, and of disorder forward guide, an instrument of wars and foe of peace, is lack of sense that sets at enmity parents and children and along with gold shall marriage not be honorable at all. And the land shall have its borders, and each sea its watchers craftily distributed to all those that have gold. For ages thus shall those who purpose to possess the land that feedeth many plunder laboring men, in order that, procuring larger space, they may enslave them by a false pretense. And if the huge earth from the starry heaven held not her throne far off, there had not been for men an equal light. but bought with gold, it had belonged to rich men, 
and God must for poor men have prepared another world. There shall come to thee sometime from above a heavenly stroke deserved, O haughty Rome, and thou shalt be the first to bend thy neck and be raised to the ground, and thee shall fire destructive utterly consume, cast down upon thy pavements, and thy wealth shall perish, and wolves and foxes dwell in thy foundations, and then shalt thou be wholly desolate, as if not born. Where thy palladium then? What god shall save thee, whether wrought of gold or stone or brass? Or then, where thy decrees of senate? Where shall be the race of Rhea, of Cronus, or of Zeus, and of all those whom thou didst worship? Demons without life, images of the worn-out dead, whose tombs Crete the ill-starred shall hold a cause of pride, and honor the unconscious dead with thrones. But when thou shalt have had voluptuous kings thrice five, enslaving the world from the east unto the west, there shall then a lord gray-headed, having name of the near sea, the world inspecting with a nimble foot, bringing gifts, having large amount of gold, and plundering hateful silver even more, and stripping it off, he shall pick it up, and he shall have part in all mysteries of Magian shrines, display his child as a god, abolish all things sacred, and disclose the ancient mysteries of deceit to all. Sad, then, the time when he himself, sad one, shall perish. And yet shall the people say, Thy mighty strength, O city, shall fall down, at once perceiving that the evil day is coming on. And thy most piteous fate foreseeing, fathers and young children, then shall mourn together. They, alas, alas, shall wail beside the Tiber's lamentable banks. After him, at the latest day of all, shall three rule, filling out a name of God, the heavenly, of whom is the power both now and to all ages. One of them being old, the scepter long shall wield, most piteous king, who in his houses shall shut up and guard all the goods of the world, in order that, when from the utmost limits of the earth, that man, the matricidal fugitive, shall come again, he may bestow these things on all, and furnish Asia with great wealth. And then shalt thou mourn, and shalt put aside the luster of the broad-striped purple robe of thy commanders, and wear mourning dress, O haughty queen, offspring of Latin Rome, the glory of that arrogance of thine shall be for thee no longer, nor shalt thou, ill-fated, ever be raised up again, but shalt lie prostrate. For the glory also of eagle-bearing legions shall fall low. Where then thy power? What allied land shall be subjected by thy follies lawlessly? For then in all earth shall confusion be of mortals, when the Almighty shall himself to the tribunal come to judge the souls of the living and the dead and all the world. And parents shall not be to children dear, nor children to their parents, on account of their impiety and their distress unlooked for. Thine thenceforth shall gnashing be, and scattering in conquest, and when the fall of cities comes and yawnings of the earth. When a dragon, charged with fire in both his eyes, and with full belly shall come on the waves, and shall afflict thy children, and there be famine and war of kinsmen, near at hand is the end of the world, and the last day and judgment of the immortal God for them that are approved and chosen. And there shall against the Romans first of all be wrath implacable, and there come a time of drinking blood and wretched course of life. Alas, alas for thee, thou reckless land, great barbarous nation! Thou didst not perceive whence naked and unworthy thou didst come to the sun's light, that to that place again naked thou mightiest withdraw and afterwards come unto judgment, as unjustly judging, with hands gigantic coming from on high alone through all the world thou shalt abide under the earth. By naphtha and asphalt and brimstone and much fire thou utterly shalt disappear and shalt be burning dust for ages and each one who sees shall hear from Hades a great mournful bellowing and gnashing of teeth, and thee noisily beating with thine own hands thy godless breast. For altogether there is equal night, for rich and poor and naked from the earth, naked again to earth, they haste away and cease from life when they complete their time. No slave is there, nor any land, nor tyrant, nor king, nor leader having much conceit, 
nor speaker learned in law, nor magistrate judging for money, nor do they pour out the blood of sacrifices and libations upon the altars. There sounds not a drum nor cymbal, nor perforated flute that has a power to madden mind itself, nor sound of pipe that, being the likeness of a crooked snake, nor trumpet, harsh-toned messenger of wars, nor those made drunken in the lawless feasts of revelry, nor in the choral dance, nor sound of harp, nor harmful instrument, nor strife, nor anger manifold, nor sword is with the dead. But an eternity, common to all, is keeper of the key of the great prison before God's judgment seat, with images of gold and silver and stone. Ye are ready, that unto the bitter day ye may come to see your first punishment, O Rome, and gnashing of teeth. And no more shall Syrian or Greek lay down his neck beneath thy servile yoke, nor foreigner, nor other nation, Plundered thou shalt be, and made to suffer what thou didst exact, and in fear wailing thou shalt give, until thou pay back all things, and thou for the world shalt be a triumph and reproach of all. Then shall the sixth race of the Latin kings and life at last and scepters leave behind from the same race another king shall reign, who shall rule every land and scepters wield, and having full power and by the decrees of God most mighty shall his children rule, and of unshaken children is his race. For thus it is decreed while time moves round, when there shall be of Egypt thrice five kings. Thereafter, when the limit of the time of the phoenix shall come round, there shall a race of peoples come to plunder, tribes confused, enemy of the Hebrews. Then shall Ares go plundering Ares, and he shall himself destroy the haughty threatening of the Romans. For Rome's power perished, then, while in its bloom. An ancient queen with cities dwelling round, no longer shall the land of fertile Rome prevail. When, out of Asia, one shall come to rule with Ares, and when he has wrought all these things, to the city afterwards shall he come. And three times three hundred and eight and forty shalt thou make complete, when, taking thee by force, an ill-starred fate shall come upon thee and complete thy name. Ah, me! I, the thrice wretched, shall I see sometime that day to thee destructive, Rome, but to all Latins most? It honors him with counsels who goes up on Trojan car, with hidden children from the Asian land, having a fiery soul. But when he shall cut through the isthmus, looking wistfully, moving against all, passing over the sea, then shall dark blood pursue the mighty beast and a dog chase the lion which destroys the shepherds. And then shall they take away his scepter, and to Hades he shall pass. And unto Rhodes shall come an evil last but greatest. There shall also be for Thebes an evil conquest afterwards, and Egypt shall perish by the wickedness of rulers. And he who, being mortal, even so escaped headlong destruction afterwards, thrice blessed was, even four times happy man and Rome shall be a room, and Delos dull, and Samos sand. Later again thereafter there shall come an evil to the Persians for their pride, and all their insolence shall come to naught. And then a holy land of all the earth, having raised up the dead, shall wield the scepter unto all ages. Thrice then unto Rome will the Most High bring pitiable fate, and unto all men, and by their own works they'll perish. But they would not be persuaded, which would have been much more to be desired. But when forthwith there shall increase for ill an evil day of famine and of plague and of intolerable battle din, even then again the former daring lord shall, having called the senate, counsel take, how he shall utterly destroy. Dry land shall bloom together with the leaves appearing, and the heavenly firmament shall bring to light upon the solid rock rainstorm and flame, and much wind on the land, and over all the earth a multitude of poisonous sowings. But with shameful soul shall they again act, fearing not the wrath of God or men, forsaking modesty, longing for, and greedy tyrants and violent sinners, false, insatiate, workers of evil, and in nothing true, destroyers of faith, on foul speech, in false words. They shall have no fill of wealth, but shamelessly they will strip off still more. Under the rule of tyrants they shall perish. The stars shall all fall forwards in the sea, all one by one, 
yet shall men see in heaven a brilliant comet, sign of much distress about to come, of war and battle strife. Let me not live when the gay woman reigns, but then when heavenly grace shall reign within, and when the holy child shall crush with bonds the mischievous destroyer of all men, opening the depth to view, and suddenly the wooden house shall cover mortals round. But when the generation tenth shall be within the house of Hades, afterwards the mighty sway of one of female sex, and God himself shall increase many evils when she with royal honor has been crowned, and altogether then an impious age. The sun obscurely looking shines by night, the stars shall leave the sky, and with much storm a hurricane shall desolate the earth, and there shall be a rising of the dead. The running of the lame shall be most swift, the deaf shall hear, the blind shall see, and those that talk not shall talk, and to all shall life and wealth be common. And the land alike for all, divided not by walls or fences, shall bear more abundant fruits, and fountains of sweet wine and of white milk and honey it shall give. And judgment of the immortal God, great King, but when God shall change times, winter producing summer, then shall be oracles all fulfilled. But when the world has perished, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, cross, and the earth shall perspire, and there shall be the sign of judgment. And from the heaven shall come the King, who for ages is to be, present to judge all flesh and the whole world. Faithful and faithless mortals shall see God, the Most High, with the saints at the end of time. And of men bearing flesh he judges souls upon his throne, when sometime the whole world shall be a desert and a place of thorns. And mortals shall their idols cast away, and all wealth and the searching fire shall burn earth, heaven, and sea, and it shall burn the gates of Hades' prison. Then shall come all flesh of the dead to the free light of the saints, but the lawless shall that fire whirl round and round for ages. Howsoever much one did in secret, then shall he all things declare. For God shall open dark breasts to the light, and lamentation shall there be from all and gnashing of teeth, brightness of the sun, shall be eclipsed, and dances of the stars. He shall roll up the heaven, and of the moon the light shall perish. And he shall exalt the valleys and destroy the heights of the hills, and height no longer shall appear remaining among men. And the hills shall with the plains be level, and no more on any sea shall there be sailing. For the earth shall then with heat be shriveled, and the dashing streams shall with the fountains fall. The trumpet shall send from heaven a very lamentable sound, howling the loathsomeness of wretched men and the world's woes. And then the yawning earth shall show Tartarian chaos, and all kings shall come unto the judgment seat of God, and there shall out of heaven a stream of fire and brimstone flow. But for all mortals then shall there be a sign, a distinguished seal, the wood among believers, and the horn fondly desired, the life of pious men, but it shall be stumbling block of the world, giving illumination to the elect by water in twelve springs, and there shall rule a shepherding iron rod. This one, who now is in acrostics, which gave signs of God, thus written openly, the Savior is, immortal King, who suffered for our sake. Him Moses typified when he stretched out holy arms, conquering Amalek by faith, that the people might know him to be elect and honorable, before his father God, the rod of David, and the very stone which he indeed aid promise, and in which he that believes shall have eternal life. For not in glory, but as mortal man, shall he come to creation, pitiable, unhonored, without seemly form, to give hope to the pitiable. And he will give fair form to mortal flesh, and heavenly faith to those without faith. And he'll give fair form to the man who was fashioned from the first, by the holy hands of God, and whom by guile the serpent led astray unto the fate of death, to go and knowledge to receive of good and evil, so that leaving God, he serves the ways of mortals. For at first, receiving him as fellow counselor from the beginning, the Almighty said, Let both of us, O Son, make mortal tribes, stamping them with the impress of our image, I now by my hands, and thou by the word in after time shalt for our form provide, that we may jointly cause it to arise. 
keeping in mind this purpose he shall come to the creation, to a holy virgin, bringing the likeness antitypical, baptizing with water by the elders' hands, and by the word accomplishing all things, and healing every sickness. By his word the winds shall he make cease, and with his foot shall calm the raging sea, walking thereon in peaceful faith. And from five loaves of bread and a fish of the sea live thousands men, shall he fill in the desert, and then, taking all the remaining fragments for the hope of peoples, shall he fill twelve baskets full. And the souls of the blessed he shall call, and love the pitiable, who, being mocked, beaten, and whipped, shall evil do for good, desiring poverty. He who perceives all things, and sees all things, and hears all things, shall search the heart and bear it to conviction. For of all things is he himself the ear, and mind, and sight, and word that maketh forms, to whom all things submit, and he preserves them that are dead, and every sickness heals. Into the hands of lawless men, at last, and faithless, he shall come, and they will give to God rude buffetings, with impure hands and poisonous spittle, with polluted mouths, and he to whips will openly give then his holy back, for he unto the world a holy virgin shall himself commit, and silent he will be when buffeted, lest any one should know whose son he is, or whence he came, that he may talk to the dead. And he shall also wear a crown of thorns, for of thorns is the crown and ornament elect, eternal. They shall pierce his side with a reed, that they may fulfill their law. For of reeds shaken by another spirit, or nourished inclinations of the soul, of anger and revenge. But when these things shall be accomplished, of thee which I spoke, then unto him shall every law be loosed, which from the first by the decrees of men was given because of disobedient people. He'll spread his hands and measure all the world. But gall for food and vinegar to drink they gave him. This inhospitable board they'll show him. But the curtain of the temple shall be asunder rent, and in midday there shall be for three hours dark monstrous night. For it was no more pointed out again how to serve secret temple and the law, which had been covered with the world's displays, when the Eternal came himself on earth. And into Hades shall he come announcing hope unto all the saints, the end of ages and the last day, and having fallen asleep, the third day he shall end the lot of death. Then from the dead departing he shall come to light the first to show forth to the elect beginning of resurrection, and wash off by means of water of immortal spring their former wickedness, that, being born from above, they might be no more enslaved to the unlawful customs of the world. And first, then openly unto his own, shall he as Lord in flesh be visible, as he before was, and in hands and feet exhibit four marks fixed in his own limbs, denoting east and west and south and north, for of the world so many royal powers shall against our exemplar consummate the deed so lawless and condemnable. Daughter of Zion, Holy One, rejoice, who hast suffered many things. Thy king himself mounted upon a foal is hastening on. Behold, meek he shall become, that he may lift our slavish yoke, so grievous to be born lying upon our neck, and many annul our godless laws and bonds compulsory. Know thou thy God himself, who is God's Son. Him glorify and hold within thy heart, from thy soul love him, and extol his name. Put off thy former friends and wash thyself from their blood, for he is not by thy songs nor by thy prayers appeased, nor does he give to perishable sacrifices heed, being imperishable. But present the holy hymn of understanding mouths, and know who this one is, and thou shalt then behold the Father. And then shall all the elements of the world abide in solitude, air, earth, sea, light, of gleaming fire, and heavenly sky, and night, and all days into one shall run together, and into outward form all desolate. For from heaven shall the stars of light all fall, and there shall fly no longer in the air the well-winged birds, nor stepping beyond the earth, for wild beasts shall all perish nor shall be voices of men, nor of beasts, nor of birds. The world shall hear no serviceable sound, being disordered. But a mighty sound of threatening shall be the deep sea sound aloud. 
and swimming trembling creatures of the sea shall all die, and no longer on the waves shall sail the freighted ship, and earth shall grow in blood stained by wars, and all the souls of men shall gnash with their teeth of the lawless souls, both by loud crying and by fear, dissolved by thirst, by famine, and by plague and murders, and they shall call death beautiful, and death shall flee away from them. For death no more, nor night shall give them rest, and many things will they in vain ask God who rules on high, and then will he his face turn openly away from them. For he to erring men gave in seven ages for repentance signs by the hands of a virgin undefiled. All these things in my mind God himself showed, and all that have been spoken by my mouth will he accomplish. And I know the number of the sands and the measures of the sea. I know the inmost places of the earth and gloomy Tartarus. I know the numbers of the stars and the trees and all the tribes of quadrupeds and of the swimming things and flying birds and of men who are now and of those yet to be and of the dead. For I myself the forms and mind of men did fashion and right reason did I give and knowledge taught. I whom formed eyes and ears, who see and hear and every thought discern, and who within am conscious of all things, I am still. And hereafter will convict and punishing what any mortal did in secret and upon God's judgment seat coming and speaking unto mortal men. I understand the dumb man and I hear him that speaks not and how great the whole height from earth to heaven is, and the beginning and end I know, who made the heaven and earth, for all things have proceeded from him, things from the beginning to the end he knows. For I alone am God, and other God there is not. They, my image formed of wood, treat as divine, and shaping it by hand, they sing their praises over idols dumb with supplications and unholy rites. Forsaking the Creator, they were slaves to lewdness. Men possessing everything bestow their gifts on things which cannot aid, as if they for my honors deemed these things all useful, with the smell of sacrifice filling the feast, as if for their own dead. For they flesh and bones full of marrow burn offering on altars, and they pour out blood to demons, and they kindle lights to me, the giver of light. And as to a god that thirsts, do mortals drunken pour out wine, for naught to idols that can give no aid. I have no need of your burnt offerings, nor your libations, nor polluted smoke, nor blood most hateful. For in memory of kings and tyrants, they will do these things unto dead demons, as to heavenly beings, performing service godless and destructive. And godless, they their images call gods, forsaking the Creator, having faith that from them they derive all hope and life, deaf and dumb, in the evil putting trust. But they are wholly ignorant of good. Two ways did I myself before them set of life and of death, and before them set judgment to choose good life. But they themselves hastened to death and to eternal fire. Man is my image, having upright reason. For him a table pure and without blood make ready and with good things fill it up, and give the hungry bread, the thirsty drink, and to the body that is naked clothes from thine own labors with unsullied hands providing. Recreate the afflicted man, and help the weary, and provide for me, the living one, a living sacrifice, sowing piety, that also I to thee sometime may give immortal fruits, and light eternal thou shalt have, and fadeless life when I shall prove all by fire. For all things I shall fuse and shall pick out what is pure. Heaven will I roll up and the depths of earth lay open, and then will I raise the dead, making an end of fate and sting of death, and afterward for judgment will I come judging the manner both of pious men and impious. I will set ram close to ram, shepherd to shepherd, calf to calf, for test close to each other whosoever were exalted, proven by trial, and who stopped the mouth of every one, that they themselves, vying with them that lead a holy life, may likewise bring them into slavery, enjoining silence, urged by love of gain, not proved before me, then shall all withdraw. No longer henceforth shalt thou grieving say, Morrow shall be, nor yesterday has been. Not many days of care, nor spring, nor winter, nor summer then, nor autumn, nor sunset, nor sunrise, for a long day I will make, and unto ages there shall be the light longed for of the great 
Christ Jesus of ages. Thou who art self-begotten, undefiled, true and eternal, measuring by thy power from heaven the fiery blast, and with rough torch from clashing doth the scepter keep, and calm the crashings of the heavy-sounding thunders, and driving earth into confusion dost hold back the rushing noises, and the fire-blazing scourges thou dost blunt of lightnings, and the vast outpour of storms, and of autumnal hail, and chilling stroke of clouds and shock of winter, for of these each one indeed is marked out in thy mind. Whatever seems good to thyself to do, thy son nods his assent to, having been begotten in thy bosom before all creation. Fellow counselor with thee, former of mortals and creator of life, him with the first sweet utterance of mouth thou didst address. Behold, let us make man in a form altogether like our own, and let us give him life sustaining breath. Him being yet mortal, all things of the world shall serve, and unto him, formed out of clay, we will subject all things. And thou didst speak these things by word, and all things came to pass according to thy heart, and thy command together all the elements obeyed, and an eternal creature was arranged in mortal figure, also heaven, air, fire, and earth and water of the sea, sun, moon, chorus of stars, hills, both night and day, sleeping and waking up, spirit and passion, soul and understanding, art, might, and strength, and the wild tribes of living things, both swimming things and fowls, and of those walking, and amphibia, and those that creep, and those of double nature, for acting in accord with his own will, under thy leading, he arranged all things. But in the latest times the earth he passed, and coming late from the Virgin Mary's womb, a new light rose, and going forth from heaven put on a mortal form, and bearing his own news, he next addressed the maiden with his voice, O virgin, in thy bosom undefiled, receive thou God. Thus speaking, he inbreathed God's grace on the sweet maiden, and straightway alarm and wonder seized her as she heard, and she stood trembling, and her mind was wild with flutter of excitement, while at heart she quivered at the unlooked-for things she heard. But she again was gladdened, and her heart was cheered by the voice, and the maiden laughed, and her cheek reddened with a sense of joy, and spellbound was her heart with a sense of shame, and confidence came to her. And the word flew into the womb, and in course of time, having become flesh and endued with life, was made a human form, and came to be a boy distinguished by his virgin birth. For this was a great wonder to mankind, but it was no great wonder unto God the Father, nor was it to God the Son. And the glad earth received the newborn babe, the heavenly throne laughed, and the world rejoiced, and the prophetic new appearing star was honored by the wise men, and the babe born was shown in a manger unto them that obeyed God, and keepers of the herds, and goat herds, and to shepherds of the lambs. And Bethlehem, called by God the fatherland, of the word was chosen, and in heart practice lowliness of mind, and cruel deeds hate, and thy neighbor love holy, even as thyself and from thy soul love God and do him service. Therefore we sprung from the holy race of the heavenly Christ, are called of common blood, and we restrain and worship recollection of good cheer, and walk the paths of piety and truth. Not ever are we suffered to approach the inmost sanctuary of the temples, nor pour libations to carved images, nor honor them with prayers, nor with the smells much pleasing of flowers, nor with light of lamps, nor yet with shining votive offerings adorn them, nor with smoke of frankincense that sends forth flame of altars, nor do thou, adding unto the sacrifice of bulls and taking pleasure in defilement, send blood of sheep slaughtering outrage, thus to give ransom for penalty beneath the earth, nor by the smoke of flesh-consuming pyre and odors foul pollute the light of heaven, but joyful with pure minds and cheerful soul, with love abounding and with generous hands, with soothing psalms and songs that honor God, we are commanded to sing praise to thee, the all-imperishable and without deceit, all-Father God of understanding mind. Book 9 O world of men wide scattered, and long walls, the cities huge and nations numberless, throughout the east and west and south and north, divided off by various languages and kingdoms. 
other things, the very worst against you, I am now about to speak. For from the time when on the earlier men the flood came, and the Almighty One himself destroyed that race by many waters, then brought he in yet another race of men, untiring, and they, setting themselves up against heaven, built a height unspeakable a tower, and tongues of all were loosed again, and on them hurled came wrath of God most high, by which the tower unutterably great fell, and against each other they stirred up an evil strife. And then of mortal men was the tenth race, since these things came to pass, and the whole earth was among foreign men, and various languages distributed, whose numbers I will tell, and in acrostics of the initial letter show the name. And first shall Egypt royal power receive, preeminent and just, and then in her shall many counseling men be governors. Moreover, then a fearful man shall rule, close fighter very strong, and he shall have this letter of the acrostic of his name. Sword shall he stretch out against pious men, and while this one is ruler, there shall be a fearful sign in the Egyptian land, which, gladdening very greatly, shall with corn souls perishing with famine then supply. The lawgiver, himself a prisoner, the east and offspring of Assyrian men, shall nourish, and his name, know thou, of the measure of the number ten. But when there shall come from the radiant heaven ten strokes of judgment upon Egypt, then will I again proclaim these things to thee. Memphis, alas, alas for thee, alas, great royal one, the Erythraean sea shall thy much people utterly destroy. Then when the people of twelve tribes shall leave the fruitful land of ruin by command of the immortal, the Lord God himself will also give a law unto mankind. And over the Hebrews, then a mighty king, magnanimous, shall rule, and have a name derived from sandy Egypt, Theban man of doubtful native land. And Memphis, he, dread serpent, will show outward signs of love, and he will watch over many things and wars. Now the tenth kingdom, being twelve times complete, seven besides, and even unto the tenth hundred, others being altogether left behind, then shall arise the Persian sovereignty, and then an evil shall befall the Jews, famine and pestilence intolerable, they do not make escape from in that day. But when a Persian shall rule, and a son of his son's son, shall lay the scepter down, while years roll round to five hours, and to these a hundred more, and thou a hundred nines shall finish, and all things shalt thou repay. And then unto the Persians and the Medes shalt thou be given over as a slave, destroyed with blows by reason of hard fights. Straightway to Persians and Assyrians, and to all Egypt shall an evil come, and to Libya and the Ethiopians, and to the Carians and Pamphylians, and to all other mortals. And he then shall to the grandsons give the royal power, who again snatching the whole earth away shall plunder races for their many spoils, not having fellow feeling. Mournful dirges shall the sad Persians by the Tigris wail, and Egypt water many a land with tears. And then to thee, O Median land, a man of wealth abundant and of Indian birth, shall many evils do, till thou repay all things which thou, possessed of shameless soul, hast done before. Alas, alas for thee, thou Median nation! Thou shalt afterwards be servant unto Ethiopian men, beyond the land of Mero. Wretched thou shalt from the first seven and a hundred years complete, and put thy neck beneath the yoke. And then an Indian of dark countenance and gray hair and great soul, shall afterwards become Lord, who shall many evils bring upon the East by reason of hard fights, and he shall treat thee more despitefully, and shall destroy all thy men. But when he, the twentieth and the tenth year, shall be king, among them also seven and the tenth, then every nation of a royal power shall be mad and declare their victory, and during three years leave their servile blood. But he shall come again, and every nation of valiant men shall put their neck again under the yoke, serve the king as before, and of its own free will again obey. There shall be great peace throughout all the world, and then over the Assyrians there shall rule a mighty king, a man preeminent, and shall persuade all to speak pleasing things, 
which God ordained according to the law. Then all kings arrogant with pointed spears, timid and speechless, shall before him quail, and him shall very powerful rulers serve because of counsels of the mighty God. For he will carry all things in detail by reason, and all things will he subject. And he, the temple of the mighty God and lovely altar, will himself erect in his might, and will hurl the idols down. And gathering tribes together, both the race of fathers and the helpless little ones, he shall encompass the inhabitants. His name shall have two hundred for its number, and of the eighteenth letter show the sign, but when for rolling decades two and five he shall rule. Going forwards, towards the end of his time, there shall be as many kings as there are tribes of men, as there are clans, as there are cities, and as isles and coasts, and fields and lands that bring forth goodly fruit. But one of these shall be a mighty king, a leader among men, and many kings of lofty spirit shall submit to him, and to his sons and grandsons opulent give portions on account of royal power. Decades of decades, eight ones upon these of years shall they rule, and at last shall end. But when, with cruel Ares, there shall come a powerful wild beast, even for thee, O queenly land, shall wrath spring forth again. Alas, alas for thee, then, Persian land, what an outpouring of the blood of men shalt thou receive when that stronger-minded man comes to thee? Then I'll shout these things again. But when Italian soil shall generate great wonder unto mortals, there shall be moans of young children by a fountain pure, in shady cavern, offspring of wild beast that feeds on sheep, who unto manhood grown shall upon seven strong hills with reckless soul hurl many headlong down, in numbers both having a hundred, and their names shall show a great sign to them that are yet to be. And they shall build upon the seven hills strong walls and wage war around them grievous war. And then again shall there be growing up revolt of men around thee, then great land of fine ears, high-souled Egypt. But again I'll cry these things. And yet then shalt receive a great stroke in thy houses, and again there shall be a revolt of thine own men. Now over thee, O wretched Phrygia, I weep in pity, for to thee from Greece, tamer of horses, there shall conquest come, and war and plague by reason of hard fights. Ilium, I pity thee, for there shall come from Sparta and Erinus to thy halls mixed with a deadly sting, and most of all shall she bring thee toils, troubles, grains, and wails, when well-skilled men the battle shall begin, by far the noblest heroes of the Greeks who are to Ares dear. And one of these shall be a strong, brave king, of foulest deeds, he for his brother's sake will go in quest, and they shall overthrow the famous walls of Phrygian Troy, one of the rolling years, twice five, shall be filled with the bloody deeds of savage war, a wooden artifice shall sudden cover men, and on thy knees thou shalt receive this, not perceiving it to be an ambush pregnant with the Greeks, O cause of grievous woe. Alas, alas, how much in one night Hades shall receive, and what spoils of the old man weeping much shall he bear off. But what those yet to come shall be undying fame. And the great king, a hero sprung from Zeus, shall have his name of the first letter of the alphabet. Homewards shall he in order go, and then shall he fall by a treacherous woman's hand, and there shall rule a child sprung from the race and the blood of Assaracus, renowned of heroes, both a strong and valiant man. And he shall come out of the mighty fire of ravaged Troy, fleeing from fatherland by reason of the fearful toil of war, bearing his aged father on his shoulders, and also holding his son by the hand, he shall perform a pious work of law, who, looking cautiously about him, cleft the onset of the fire of burning Troy, and hurrying through the multitude in dread, he shall pass over land and fearful sea. And he shall have a trisyllabic name, for the beginning of the alphabet points out this highest man as not unknown. And then a city for the powerful Latins he will raise up. And in his fifteenth year, destroyed by waters in the depths of the sea, shall he lay hold on the event of death. But him, though dead the nations of mankind, shall not forget. For his race over all shall rule hereafter even to Euphrates and river Tigris, throughout the midland of the Assyrians, where the Parthians extended. 
For those who are yet to come it shall be, when all these things come to pass. And there shall be an old man, minstrel wise, whom all shall among mortals call most wise, by whose good understanding the whole world shall be instructed. For his chapters he according to their power of thoughts will write, and wisely will he write most marvelous things, at times appropriating words of mine measures and verses, for he shall the first my books unfold, and after these things bide them, and unto men bring them to light no more until the end of baneful death and life. But when forthwith these things have been fulfilled which I spoke, yet again the Greeks shall fight with one another, and Assyrians, Arabians, and the quiver-bearing Medes, and Persians and Sicilians shall rise up, and Lydians, Thracians, and Bithynians, and they who dwell in the land of fair corn beside the streams of Nile, and among all will God the imperishable put at once confusion. But exceeding terribly shall an Assyrian base-born fiery man come suddenly, possessed of beastly soul, and looking cautiously about him, cut through every isthmus, going against all, and sailing over the sea. Then, faithless Greece, to thee shall happen very many things. Alas, alas for thee, O wretched Greece, how many things thou art obliged to wail! And during seven and eighty rolling years thou shalt the miserable refuse be O fearful battle among all the tribes. Then shall a Macedonian man again bring forth for Hellas woe, and shall destroy all Thrace, and toils of Ares on the isles and coasts, and the war-loving Triballi. He shall among the foremost fighters be, and he shall share that name which shows the sign of numbers ten times fifty. And short-lived shall he be, but behind him he shall leave the greatest kingdom on the boundless earth, but by base spearmen he himself shall fall, while thought to live in quiet as none else. And afterwards shall a great-hearted child of this one rule, beginning with his name, the alphabet, but his race shall pass out. Not of Zeus, not of Amnion, shall they call this one true son, yet still a bastard son of Kronos as they all imagine him. And cities he of many mortal men shall plunder, and for Europe shall shoot up the greatest sore. And also terribly will he abuse the city Babylon, and every land the sun looks down upon, and he alone shall sail both east and west. Alas, alas for thee, O Babylon, thou shalt serve triumphs, who was called a queen. Down upon Asia Ares comes, he comes surely, and shall thy many children slay. And then shalt thou send forth thy royal man, named by the number four, expert with spear among the mighty warriors, terrible, shooting with bow and arrow. And then famine and war shall hold possession of the midst of the Sicilians and Assyrians, but kings of lofty spirit shall embrace the dreadful state of heart-consuming strife. But do thou, fleeing, leave the former king. Be neither willing to remain nor fear to be unhappy, for on thee shall come a dreadful lion, a flesh-eating beast, wild, strange to justice, wearing on his shoulders a mantle. Flee the thunder-smiting man, and Asia all shall bear an evil yoke, and many a murder shall the wet earth drink. But when a mighty city, prosperous Ares of Pella shall in Egypt found, and it shall be named from him fate and death, by his companions treacherously betrayed, for barbarous murder shall destroy this man, around the tables when he shall have left the Indians and shall come to Babylon. Thereafter other kings, in a few years, devourers of the people, arrogant and faithless, shall rule each by his own tribe, but a great-hearted hero, who shall glean all fenced Europe, from the time each land shall drink the blood of all tribes, shall forthwith abandon life, unloosing his own fate. And other kings there shall be, twice four men of his race, and the same name to them all. And there shall be a bride of Egypt then, commanding, and a noble city great of Macedonian lord, Queen Alexandria, famed nourisher of cities, shining fair, she alone shall be the metropolis. Let Memphis then unbraid them that command, and peace shall be deep throughout all the world. Then shall the land of black soil have more fruits, and then there shall come evil to the Jews, nor shall they in that day make their escape from famine and intolerable plague. But the new world of black soil and fair corn, divine land, shall receive much wandering men. 
but marshy Egypt's eight kings shall fill up the numbers of two hundred years and three and thirty, yet shall offspring perish not of all of them. But there shall issue forth a female root, a bane of mortal men, betrayer of her kingdom. But they shall, according to their evil deeds, perform their wickedness thereafter, and one here another there shall perish. Son that wears the purple shall cut off his warlike sire, and he himself in turn by his own son, and ere he shall put forth another shoot, he shall cease. But a root shall sprout again thereafter of itself, and there shall be a race beside him growing. For a queen there shall be of the land by Nihilus's streams, which comes down through seven mouths into the sea, and her name very lovely shall be that of the number twenty, and she will demand numberless things and gather up all goods of gold and silver, but from her own men shall treachery befall her. Then again for thee, O dusky land, shall there be wars and battles and great slaughter of mankind. When many over fertile Rome shall rule, examples not at all of happy men, but tyrants, and there shall be of thousands chiefs, and of ten thousands, and the overseers of popular assemblies under law, then shall the mightiest Caesars bear the rule, ill-fated all their days. And of these last shall for initial have the number ten. Last Caesar, stretching on the earth his limbs, struck by dire Ares by a hostile man, whom carrying in their hands the youth of Rome shall bury piously, and over him pour out their token for his friendship's sake, rendering a tribute to his memory. But when thou shalt come to an end of time, and hast completed twice three hundred years and twice ten, from the time when he shall rule who is thy founder, child of the wild beast, there shall no longer a dictator be ruling a measured period, but a lord shall become king, man equal to the gods. Then Egypt, know the king that comes to thee, and dreadful Ares of the glittering helm shall surely come, for there shall be for thee, O widowed one, a capture afterwards. For round the walls of thy land there shall be a terrible raging mischief working wars. But having suffered misery in wars, thou, wretched, shalt thyself flee from above those lately wounded. And then, to the couch, shalt thou come to the dreadful man himself. The wedlock, sharing one bed, is the end. Alas, alas for thee, ill-wedded bride, thy royal power unto the Roman king shalt thou give, and thou shalt repay all things which thou aforetime didst with masculine hands. Thou shalt give the whole land by way of dower, as far as Libya and the dark-skinned men, to the resistless man. And thou shalt be no more a widow, but thou shalt cohabit with a man-eating lion terrible, a furious warrior. And then shalt thou be unhappy and among all men unknown, for thou shalt leave possessed of shameless soul. And thee, the stately, shall the encircling tomb receive is gone, living within, adapted at the summits beautiful, wrought curiously, and a great multitude shall mourn thee, and the dreadful king shall make a piteous lamentation over thee. And then shall Egypt be the toiling slave, who many years against the Indians bears her trophies, and she shall serve shamefully, and with the river, the fruit-bearing Nile, her tears, for haying gathered wealth, and stone of all good things, a nourisher of cities, she shall feed sheep-eating race of fearful men. All to how many beasts, O very wealthy Egypt, thou shalt be booty and spoil, but giving peoples laws, and formerly delighting in great kings, thou shalt to peoples be a wretched slave on account of that people, whom of old, piously living, thou leddest to much woe of toils and wailings, and didst put a plow upon their neck, and irrigate the fields with mortal tears. Therefore the Lord himself, the imperishable God who dwells in heaven, shall utterly destroy and send thee on to wailing. And thou shalt make recompense for what thou didst unlawfully of old, and know at last that God's wrath came to thee. But I, to Python and to Panopeus, of goodly towers shall go, and then shall all declare that I am a true prophetess, oracle singing, yet a messenger with maddened soul. And when thou shalt come forward to the books Thou shalt not tremble, and all things to come, and things that were, ye shall know from our words. Then none shall call the God-seized prophetess an oracle singer of necessity. But now, Lord, 
and my very lovely strain, driving off frenzy and real voice inspired and fearful madness, and give charming song. Book 10 But come now, hear of me the mournful time of sons of Latium, and first of all after the kings of Egypt were destroyed, and the like earth had downwards borne them all, and after Pella's townsmen, under whom the whole east and the rich west were cast down, whom Babylon dishonored and stretched out for Philip a dead body not of Zeus of Ammon, not true things were prophesied, and after that one of the race, and blood of King Assaracus, who came from Troy, even he who cleft the violence of fire, and after many lords, and after men, to Ares dear, and after the young babes, the children of the beast that feeds on sheep, and after the passing of six hundred years and decades too of Rome's dictatorship, the very first lord, from the western sea, shall be of Rome the ruler, very strong and warlike, the initial of whose name begins the letters, and fast binding thee, O thou of goodly fruit, he shall be full of man-destroying Ares. Thou shalt pay the outrage which thou willing didst force on, for he, great soul, shall be the best in wars. Before him Thrace and Sicily shall crouch, with Memphis, Memphis cast headlong to earth by reason of the wickedness of rulers, and of a woman unenslaved who falls under the spear. And laws will he ordain for peoples and put all things under him. Having great fame, he shall wield scepter long. For no short time shall he last, nor shall ever be other greater scepter-bearing king than this one, over the Romans. Not one hour, for God did lavish all things upon him. And also in the noble earth, he showed great marvelous seasons, and with them showed signs. But when a radiant star, all like the sun, shall shine forth out of heaven in the middays, then shall the secret word of the Most High come clothed in flesh like mortals. But with him the might of Rome and of the illustrious Latins shall increase. But the mighty king himself shall under his appointed lot expire, transmitting to another royal power. But after him a man, a warrior strong, wearing the purple mantle on his shoulders, shall bear rule and with this initial be numbered three hundred, and he shall destroy the Medes and arrow-hurling Parthians, and he himself by his power shall subvert the high gate city, and again shall come evil to Egypt and the Assyrians, and to the Colchi and Heniaki, and to those by the waters of the Rhine, the Germans dwelling over the sandy shores, and he himself shall ravage afterwards the high gate city near Eridanus, which is devising evils. And then he shall forthwith fall down, struck by gleaming iron, and afterwards shall rule another man, weaving guile, and the initial of his name will show the number three, and he much gold shall gather. And with him there shall not be satiety of wealth, but plundering more recklessly, he'll put all things in the earth. But peace shall come, and Ares shall desist from wars, and he shall make known many things in divination of the greatest things, inquiring for the sake of means of life. Yet there shall be on him the greatest sign. From heaven down on the king while perishing, there shall flow many little drops of blood, and many lawless things will he perform, and put around the neck of Romans pain, trusting in divination. And the heads of the assembly he will also slay, and famine shall seize Cappadocians and Thracians, Macedonians and Italians, and Egypt shall alone feed numerous tribes, and the king himself beguiling secretly shall craftily destroy the virgin maid, but her the citizens in tearful grief shall bury, and against the king they all holding wrath shall abuse him craftily. While strong Rome blossoms, the strong man shall perish. And again there shall rule another lord of the number of twice ten, and then shall come unto the Sauromatians, and to Thrace, and to the Trebali, famed for hurling darts, wars, and sad cares, and Roman Ares shall tear all in pieces. And a fearful sign shall there be, when this man shall rule the land of the Italians and Pannonians, and there shall be at the mid-hour of day dark night around them, and then from the heaven a shower of stones. And thereupon the Lord and vigorous judge of the Italians shall go in Hades halls by his own fate. Again another fearful man shall come and dreadful, numbering fifty, and from all the cities many noblest citizens, born to wealth, he shall utterly destroy, 
a dreadful serpent breathing grievous war, who, sometimes stretching forth his hands, shall make an end of his own race and stir all things, acting the athlete, driving chariots, putting to death and daring countless things. And he shall cleave the mountain of two seas and sprinkle it with gore. And out of sight shall also vanish the destructive man. Then, making himself equal unto God, shall he return, but God will prove him not. And while he rules, there shall be peace profound, and not the fears of men. And from the ocean flowing and cleaving by Ausonia shall come untrodden water, and around, looking with anxious care, he will appoint his very many contests for the people, and he himself, an actor, will contend with voice and Sithara, and sing a song along with harp string. Later he will flee and leave the royal power, and perishing illy will he repay the harm he wrought. After him three shall rule, and two of them shall have the number seventy by their names, and in addition to these shall be one of the third letter, and one here, one there, shall perish by strong Ares' sturdy hands. Then shall a mighty ruler of men come, destroyer of the pious, strong-minded man, spear-wielding Ares, whom seven times the tenth shall point out clearly. He shall overthrow Phoenicia and destroy Assyria. A sword shall come upon the sacred land of Solima, even to the utmost bend of the Tiberian Sea. Alas, alas, Phoenicia, oh, how much shalt thou endure, grief-laden with thy trophies tightly bound, and every nation shall upon thee tread. Alas, alas to the Assyrians, shalt thou come and shalt see young children serve among unfriendly men, and with the wives, and every means of life and wealth shall perish. For on thee God's wrath causing grievous woe shall come, because they did not keep his law, but served all idols with unseemly arts, and many wars and fights and homicides, famines and pestilences and confusion of cities shall be. But the reverend king of mighty soul shall at the end of life himself fall by a strong necessity. Then shall two other chief men, cherishing the memory of their father, great king, rule and in contending warriors glory much. And one of these shall be a noble man and lordly, whose name shall three hundred hold. Yet he shall also fall by treachery, not in the warring companies stretched out, but struck in Rome's plain by the two-edged brass. And after him a powerful warlike man of the letter four shall rule the mighty realm, whom all men on the boundless earth shall love. And then shall there be over all the world a rest from war. Yet all, from east to west, shall serve him willingly, not by constraint, and cities shall be under his control, and of themselves be subject. For to him shall heavenly Sabaoth much glory bring, the imperishable God who dwells on high. And then shall famine waste Pannonia, and all the Celtic land, and shall destroy one here, another there. And there shall be for the Assyrians, whom Orontes laves, structures and ornament, and what may seem yet greater anywhere. And the great king shall have a fondness for these and love them above the others far, and there are many. But he himself shall in mid-breast receive a great wound, and seized at the end of life craftily by a friend, in hallowed house of the great royal hall shall he fall down wounded, and after him shall be a ruler numbering fifty, venerable man, who above measure shall destroy Rome for many inhabitants and citizens. But he shall rule few, for in Hades' halls, for a former king's sake, he shall wounded go. But then another king, a warrior strong, who has three hundred for initial sign, shall bear rule and lay waste the Thracians' land, which is much varied, and he shall destroy the powerful Germans dwelling by the Rhine, and the Iberians that shoot the arrow. Moreover, there shall be unto the Jews another greatest evil, and with them bedewed with murder shall Phoenicia drink. And the walls of the Assyrians shall fall by many warriors, and again a man destroying life shall waste them utterly. And then shall threatenings of the mighty God, earthquakes, and great plagues be on every land, untimely snowstorms and strong thunderbolts. And then the great king, mountain-roaming Celt, shall for the toil of Ares not escape a fate unseemly, hastening eagerly after the strife of battle, but worn out shall he be. Foreign dust shall hide his corpse, but dust that of Nemea's flower has name. And after him another shall arise, a silver-headed man, and of the sea shall be his name, 
and of four syllables, Ares himself, first of the alphabet presenting. Temples he shall dedicate in all cities, watching over the world by his own foot, and bringing gifts away. Both gold and amber, much will he supply for many. And magician's mysteries, all will he from the sanctuaries keep. And what is much more excellent for men will he place? Ruling, thunderbolt, and great peace shall be when he shall be lord. And he shall be a minstrel of rich voice, and a participant in lawful things, and a just minister of what is right. But he shall fall, unloosing his own fate. After him three shall rule, and the third late shall rule, three decades keeping. Yet again of the first unit shall another king bear the rule, and another after him shall be commander, of tens numbering seven, and their names shall be honored and they shall themselves destroy men marked by many a spot, Britons and mighty Moors, and Dacians, and the Arabians. But when the last of these shall perish, fearful Ares then, he that before was wounded, shall again against the Parthians come, and utterly shall he destroy them. And then shall the king himself fall by a treacherous wild beast training his hands, excuse itself of death. And after him another man shall rule, in many wise things skilled, and he shall have himself the name of the first mighty king of the first unit, and he shall be good and mighty, and for the illustrious Latins shall this strong one accomplish many things in memory of his father, and forthwith shall he adorn the walls of Rome with gold and silver and ivory, and he shall go within the marketplaces and the temples with a strong man, and sometime direst wound shall shoot up like ears in the Roman wars and he shall sack the whole land of the Germans, when a great sign of God shall be displayed from heaven, and shall, for the king's piety, save men in brazen armor and distress. For God, who is in heaven and hears all things, shall wet him with unseasonable rain when he prays. But when these things are fulfilled of which I spoke, then with the rolling ears shall also the renowned dominion cease of the great pious king. And at the end of his life, having then proclaimed his son succeeding to the kingdom, he shall die by his own lot, and leave the royal power unto the ruler with the golden hair, who with two tens in his name, born a king from the race of his father, shall receive dominion. This man with superior powers of mind shall grasp all things, and he shall rival great-hearted overweening Hercules, and be the best in mighty arms, and have the greatest fame in chase and horsemanship. But he shall live in peril all alone. And while this man is ruler, there shall be a fearful sign. There shall be a great mist, then in the plain of Rome, so that a man may not discern his neighbor. And then wars shall come to pass along with mournful cares, when the king himself, exceeding mad with love and weakly, shall come in the marriage bed shaming his youthful offspring, infamous for inconsiderate wedding songs impure, and then, in helpless loneliness concealed, the mighty baneful man held under wrath shall in a bathroom suffer evil plight, man slaying Ares bound by treacherous fate. Know then, the fatal lot of Rome is near, because of zeal for power, and by the hands of Ares many in Palladian halls shall perish. And then Rome shall be bereft, and shall repay all things, which she alone before accomplished by her many wars. My heart laments, my heart within me mourns. For from the time when thy first king, proud Rome, gave good law to thee and to men on earth, and the word of the great immortal God came to the earth until the nineteenth reign shall have been finished, Kronos shall complete two hundred years, twice twenty and twice two, with six months added. Then the twentieth king, when smitten with sharp brass, he with the sword shall in thy houses pour out blood, shall make thy race a widow having in his name the letter which the number eighty shows, and burdened with old age. But he shall make a widow of thee in a little time, when many warriors, many overthrows, and murders, homicides, and deadly feuds, and miseries of conquests there shall be. And in confusion many a horse and man shall, cleft by force of hands, fall in the plain. And then another man shall rule, and have the sign of his name in the number ten, and many sorrows shall he bring to pass, and groans, and he shall plunder many men, but he himself shall be short-lived and fall by mighty Ares, struck by gleaming iron. Another, numbering fifty, then shall come, a warrior roused up by the east for rule, 
a warlike Ares, he shall come to Thrace, and he shall flee thereafter, and shall come into the land of the Bithynians and the Sicilian plain. But brazen Ares, the life destroyer, shall with speedy stroke utterly spoil him in the Assyrian fields. And then again there shall rule, craftily, a man skilled in fraud, full of various wiles, roused up by the west, and his name shall have the number of two hundred. And again another sign. He shall contrive a war for royal power against Assyrian men, raise a whole army and subject all things, and he shall rule the Romans with his might. But there is much contrivance in his heart, impulse of baleful Ares, serpent dire and violent in war, who shall destroy all high-born men upon the earth and slay the noble for their wealth, and, robber-like, stripping all earth while men are perishing. He shall go to the east, and all deceit shall be to him. Then shall a youthful Caesar with him reign, having the name of a puissant lord of Macedon, by the first letter known. Bringing in broils around him, he shall flee the hard deception of the coming king in the bosom of the army. But the one who rules by his barbaric usages, a temple guard, shall perish suddenly slain by strong Ares with the gleaming iron. Him, even dead, shall people tear in pieces. And then the kings of Persia shall rise up, and Roman Ares, Roman lord. And Phrygia shall with earthquakes groan again, wretched. Alas, alas, Laodicea, alas, alas, sad Heropolis, for you first once the yawning earth received of Rome, immense us. All things as many shall wail, while men are perishing in the hands of Ares, and the lot of men shall be bad. But then, by the eastern way, hastening to look down upon Italy, stripped naked, he shall fall by gleaming iron, acquiring hatred for his mother's sake. For seasons are of all sorts, each holds back the other, gleaming, and this not at once all know. For all things shall not be the lot of all, but only those shall be for happiness, who honor God, and shun idolatry. And now, Lord of the world, of every realm, unfeigned immortal king, for thou didst put into my heart the oracle divine, make thou the word cease. For I do not know what things I say, for thou art in me he that speaketh all these things. Now let me rest a little, and put from my heart aside the charming song. For weary is my heart, foretelling with divine words, royal power. Book 11 Great word divine, he bids me sing again. The immortal holy God imperishable, who gives the kings their power and takes away, and who determined for them time both ways, both that of life and that of baneful death. And these the heavenly God enjoins on me unwilling to bring tidings unto kings concerning royal power, and spear impetuous Ares, and by him all perish, child and the old man who gives to the assemblies laws, and many wars and battles there shall be, and homicides, famines and pestilences, earthquake shocks and mighty thunderbolts, and many ways of the Assyrians over all the world and pillaging and robbery of temples. And then an insurrection there shall be of the industrious Persians, and with them Indians, Armenians, and Arabians. And unto these again a Roman king, insatiate in war, and leading on his spearmen against the Assyrians, shall draw near a young Ares, and as far as the deep-flowing silvery Euphrates shall warlike Ares stretch his deadly spear because of or by his friend betrayed, he shall fall down in the ranks smitten by the gleaming iron. And straightway coming out of Syria, there shall a purple-loving warrior rule, terror of Ares, and also his son, a Caesar, shall even all the earth oppress. And the one name is unto both of them. On first and twentieth there are to be placed five hundred, but when these in wars shall rule, and laws shall be enacted, there shall be a little rest from war, not for long time. But when a wolf shall to a flock of sheep pledge solemn oaths against the white-toothed dogs, then, having misled, he will tear in pieces the woolly sheep and cast his oaths aside. And then shall there be an unlawful strife of haughty kings and wars, and Syrians shall perish terribly, and Indians and the Armenians and Arabians 
the Persians and the Babylonians shall one another by hard fights destroy. But when a Roman Ares shall destroy a German Ares ruinous of life, triumphing on the ocean, then is war of many years for haughty Persian men, but for them there shall not be victory. For as a fish swims not upon the point of a high many ridged and windy rock, precipitant, nor does a tortoise fly, nor does an eagle into water come, so also the Persians in that day, far off from victory, while the fond nurse of the Italians, in the plain of Nile, reposing by the sacred water's side, sends forth the appointed lot to seven-hilled Rome. Now these things are. And while the name of Rome shall hold in numbers of revolving time, so many years shall the great noble city of Macedon's lord, willing, deal out corn. Another much distressing pain I'll sing for the Alexandrians who are destroyed by reason of the strife of shameful men. Strong men who were aforetime terrible, being then impotent, shall pray for peace by reason of the wickedness of chiefs. And there shall come wrath of the mighty God on the Assyrians, and a mountain stream shall utterly destroy them, which shall come to Caesar's city and harm Canaanites. The Paramus shall irrigate the city of Mopsus, then shall the Aegeans fall because of strife of very mighty men. Thee, wretched Antioch, shall Ares strong, leave not while round thee an Assyrian war is pressing. For a chief of men shall dwell within thy houses who shall fight with all the arrow-hurling Persians, he himself having obtained of Romans royal power. Now, cities of Arabians, deck yourselves with temples and with places for the race and with broad markets, and with splendid wealth, with images, gold, silver, ivory. And thou, who art of all most fond of learning, Bostra and Philippopolis, that thou mayest come into great sorrow, and the laughing spheres of the zodiacal vault, Ares, Taurus, and Gemini, and as many stars ruling ours as with them in heaven appear, shall benefit thee not. Thou, wretched one, hast trusted many, when that very man shall afterwards bring near that which is thine. And now, for Alexandrians loving war, will I sing wars most dreadful, and much people shall perish while their cities are destroyed by citizens against each other, matched and fighting for the sake of hateful strife. And round them, horrid Ares, rushing on, shall cease from war. And then one of great soul, along with his own mighty son, shall fall by treachery on the older king's account. And after him there shall rule powerfully over fertile Rome another great-souled lord, versed in war, coming from the Dacians and numbering three hundred. He shall have also the letter of the number four, and many shall he slay, and then the king shall all his brothers and his friends destroy, even while the kings are cut off, and straightway shall there be fights and pillagings and murders, suddenly on the older king's account. Then, when a wily man shall summoned come, a robber and a Roman not well known from Syria appearing, he, by guile, into a race of Cappadocian men, shall drive through, and, besieging, shall press hard, insatiate of war. And then for thee, Tiana and Mazaka, there shall be a capture. Thou shalt be enslaved, and put upon thy neck again a fearful yoke. Arid Syria shall mourn for men destroyed, and then Selenian goddess shall not guard her holy city. But when he by flight from Syria shall before the Romans come, and shall pass over the Euphrates streams, no longer like the Romans, but like fierce, dart-shooting Persians, then, fulfilling fate, down shall the ruler of the Italians fall in the ranks, smitten by the gleaming iron, and close upon him shall his children perish. But when another king of Rome shall reign, then also to the Romans there shall come unstable nations, on the walls of Rome, destructive Ares with his bastard son. Then also shall be famines, pestilence, and mighty thunderbolts, and dreadful wars, and anarchy in cities suddenly. And the Syrians shall perish fearfully, for there shall come upon them the great wrath of the Most High, and straightway an uprising of the industrious Persians, and mixed up with Persians shall the Syrians destroy the Romans. But by the divine decree they shall not make a conquest of their laws. Alas, how many with their goods shall flee front the east unto men of other tongues, 
Alas, the dark blood of how many men the land shall drink. For that shall be a time in which the living uttering over the dead a blessing shall by word of mouth pronounce death beautiful, and death shall flee from them. And now for thee, O wretched Syria, I weep in sorrow. For to thee shall come a dreadful blow from arrow-shooting men, which thou didst never think would come to thee. Also the fugitive of Rome shall come, bearing a great spear, crossing on his way Euphrates with many myriads, and he shall burn thee, and dispose all things in a bad way. O wretched Antioch, and thee a city they shall never call, when by thy lack of prudence thou shalt fall under the spears, and stripping off all things and making naked, he shall leave thee thus coverless, houseless, and when any one sees, he shall of a sudden weep for thee. And thou shalt be, O Heropolis, a triumph. Also thou, Berea, weep at Chalcis over lately wounded sons. Alas, how many by the steep high mount of Cassius shall dwell, and by Amanus how many, and how many Lysus laves, and Marsias as many, and Paramus the silver eddying. For even to the bounds of Asia they shall treasure up their spoils, make cities naked, and bear idols off, and cast down temples on much nourishing earth. And sometime to Gauls and Pannonians, to Mysians and Bithynians, there shall be great sorrow when a warrior shall have come. O Lycians, Lycians, there shall a wolf come to lick thy blood, when Sanians shall come with city-wasting Ares, and the Carpians shall draw near with Ausonians to fight. And then by his own shameless recklessness the bastard son shall put the king to death, and he himself for his impiety shall straightway perish, and again shall rule after him yet another whose name shows first letter, but he too shall quickly fall by mighty Ares, struck by gleaming iron. And yet again the world shall be confused, men perishing by pestilence and war, and the Persians, maddened by the Ausonians, shall in the toil of Ares yet again force their way. And then there shall be a flight of Romans, and thereafter there shall come the priest heard of all round, sent by the sun from Syria appearing, and by guile shall he accomplish all things. And then, too, the city of the sun shall offer prayer, and round about her shall the Persians dare the fearful threatenings of the Phoenicians. But when two chiefs, men swift in war, shall rule the very mighty Romans, one of whom shall have the number seventy, and the other the number three. Even then the stately bull that digs the earth with his hooves and stirs up the dust with his two horns shall many ills upon a dark-skinned reptile perpetrate, which draws a trail with his scales, and besides himself shall perish. And yet after him again shall come another fair-horned stag, hungry upon the mountains, striving hard to feed upon the venom-shedding beasts. Then shall a dread and fearful lion come, sent from the sun and breathing forth much flame. And then, too, by his shameless recklessness shall he destroy the well-horned rapid stag, and the most mighty venom-shedding beast so dread that sends forth many piping sounds, and the he-goat that sideways moves along, and after him fame follows. He himself, sound, unhurt, unapproachable, shall rule. The Romans and the Persians shall be weak. But Lord, King of the world, O God, restrain the song of our words and give charming song. Book 12 O men, why do ye vainly think on things too lofty as if ye immortal were? And ye are ruling but a little time, and over mortals all desire to reign, not understanding that God himself hates the lust of rule, and most of all things hates insatiate kings fearful in wickedness, and over them he stirs up what is dark. Wherefore, instead of good works and just thoughts, ye all choose for your garments purple robes, desiring wretched fights and homicides, them, God imperishable who dwells in heaven, shall make short-lived destroy them utterly, and overthrow one here, another there. But when there shall a bold destroyer come, trusting in his own might, thick-haired and grim, and shall destroy all, he shall also tear shepherds in pieces, and no victory shall be theirs unless soon, with speed of feet, pursuing eagerly through wooded glens, young dogs shall meet in conflict. 
or a dog pursued the lion, which destroys the shepherds. And then there shall be a Lord confident in his might, and named with four syllables, and shown forth clearly from the number one. But him shall brazen Ares quickly slay because of the conflict with insatiate men. Then shall two other princely men bear rule, both of the number forty, and with them shall great peace be in the world, and to all the people law and right. But them in turn shall men with gleaming helmet needing gold and silver impiously put to death, for these things catching them by their deft plans. And then again a dreadful lord shall rule, young, fighting hand to hand, whose name shall show the number seventy, life-destroying, fierce, who to the army basely shall betray the people of Rome, slain by wickedness, because of wrath of kings, and he shall hurl down every city and hut of the Latins, and Rome is no more to be seen or heard, such as of late another traveler saw. For all these things shall in the ashes lie, nor shall there be a sparing of her works, for hurtful he himself shall come from heaven. God the immortal from the sky shall send lightnings and thunderbolts upon mankind, and some he will destroy by lightnings burned, and others with his mighty thunderbolts, and Rome's strong children and the famous Latins shall then the shameless dreadful ruler slay. Around him, dead, the dust shall not lie light, but he shall be a sport for dogs and birds and wolves, for he a marital people spoiled. After him, numbering forty, there shall rule another famous Parthian destroyer, German destroyer, putting down dread beasts that kill men, which upon the ocean's streams and the Euphrates press continuous on, and then shall Rome again be as before. But when there comes a great wolf in thy plains, a ruler marching onward from the west, then shall be under powerful Ares die. Being cleft asunder by the piercing brass and over the very mighty Romans, then shall there rule yet again another man of great heart from Assyria brought to light of the first letter, and he shall himself by means of wars put all things under him, and by his armies at once power display and lay down laws. But him shall brazen Ares quickly destroy by treacherous armies falling. After him, three of haughty heart shall rule, one having the first number, one three tens, and the other with three hundred shall partake. Cruel, who gold and silver in much fire shall melt in statues of gods made with hands, and to the armies they, equipped for war, will for the sake of victory monies give, dividing many costly things and goods, and in like manner, striving eagerly after power, they shall harm disastrously the arrow-shooting Parthians of the deep, and swift Euphrates, and the hostile Medes, and the soft-haired, warlike Mesagite, and Persians also, quiver-bearing men. But when the king shall his own fate unloose, leaving unto his sons, more fit for arms, the royal scepter, and entreating right, than they, forgetful of their father's words, and having their hands all prepared for war, shall rush in conflict for the royal power. And then another lord, of the third number, shall rule alone, and smitten by a sword, shall quickly see his fate. Then after him shall many perish at each other's hands, being very valiant for the royal power. Moreover, a great-hearted one shall rule the very mighty Romans, an old lord of the number four, and manage all things well. And then upon Phoenicia shall come war and conflict, and there shall come nations near of arrow-shooting Persians. Ah, how many shall before men of barbarous speech fall down! Sidon and Tripolis and Berytus, the loudly boasting, shall behold each other amid the blood and bodies of the dead. Wretched Laodicea, round thyself thou shalt a great and unsuccessful war stir up through the impiety of men. Ah, hapless Tyrians, ye shall gather in an evil harvest, when in the daytime the sun that lighteth mortals shall withdraw, and his disk not appear, and drops of blood thick and abundant shall flow down from heaven upon the earth. And then the king shall die, betrayed by his companions. After him shall many shameless leaders still promote the wicked strife and one another kill. And then shall there a reverend ruler be of much skill with a name that numbers five, confiding in great armies whom mankind will fondly love because of royal power, and having the good name he shall hitherto add by good deeds. But while he reigns, 
there shall twixt Taurus and snow-clad Aminus be a fearful sign. From the Sicilian land a city new and beautiful and strong shall by the deep strong rivers be destroyed. And in Propontis and in Phrygia shall there be many earthquakes, and the king of great renown shall under his own lot by wasting deadly sickness lose his life. And after him shall rule two lordly kings, one numbering three hundred and one three, and many shall he utterly destroy in defense of the seven-hill city Rome and for the sake of powerful sovereignty. And then shall evil to the Senate come, nor shall it from the angry king escape while he holds wrath against it. And a sign shall then appear to all men upon earth, and fuller shall the rains be. Snow and hail shall ruin field fruits over the boundless earth, but they shall fall in wars, slain by strong Ares in behalf of the war for the Italians. And then again another king shall rule, full of devices, gathering all the army, and for the sake of war distributing money to those with brazen breastplate clad. But thereupon shall Nihilus, rich in corn, beyond the Libyan mainland irrigate for two years the dark soil and fruitful land of Egypt. But all things shall famine seize, and war and robbers, murders, homicides. And many cities shall by warlike men be thrown down headlong by the army's hands, and he, betrayed, shall fall by gleaming iron. After him, one whose number is three hundred shall rule the Romans, very mighty men. He shall stretch forth a life-destroying spear against the Armenians and the Parthians, the Assyrians and the Persians firm in war. And then anew shall a creation of splendidly built Rome with gold and amber and silver and ivory in order raised. And in her many people shall abide from all the east and from the prosperous west. And the king shall make other laws for her. But then shall death destructive and strong fate in turn receive him in a boundless isle. And there shall rule another of ten triads, a man like a wild beast, fair-haired and grim, who shall be a descendant of the Greeks, and then a city of Molossian Pythia, feeding much, and Larissa shall be bent down on Peneus's overhanging brows, and then too in horse-feeding Scythia shall be an insurrection, and dire war shall be hard by the waters of the lake Maeotis, at streams by the utmost mouth of the fount of watery Phasis, and the mead of Asphodel, and there shall many fall by powerful warriors. Ah, how many men shall Ares with strong brass receive? And then, having destroyed a Scythian race, the king shall die in his own lot, unloosing life. And yet another of the number four shall rule thereafter, openly made known a dreadful man, whom all Armenians, who drink the best ice of the flowing stream Araxis, and the Persians of great soul shall fear in wars, and between Colchians and very strong Pulaski there shall be wars, fights, and homicides, and those who hold the cities of the land of Phrygia, and those of the Propontis, and make bare from out their scabbards the two-edged swords, shall smite each other through sore impiousness. And then shall God to mortal men display from heaven a great sign with the rolling years, a bat, the portent of bad war to come. And then the king shall not escape stern fate, but die by hand, slain by the gleaming iron. After him, numbering fifty, there shall rule again another coming out of Asia, a dreadful terror, fighting hand to hand. And he shall set war on Rome's stately walls, and among Colchians and Heniaki, and the milk-drinking Agathersians by Euxine Sea at Thracia's sandy bay. And then the king shall not escape stern fate, and they will tear in pieces his dead corpse. And then, the king slain, man ennobling Rome shall be a desert, and much people perish. And then again one terrible and dread from mighty Egypt shall rule, and destroy great-hearted Parthians, and Medes, and Germans, and Agathersians of the Bosporus, Iernians, Britons, and Iberians, that bear the quiver, bent Mesagetae, and Persians, thinking themselves more than men. And then a famous man shall look upon all Hellas, acting as an enemy to Scythia and windy Caucasus, and there shall be a dread sign while he rules. Crowns altogether like the shining stars shall from heaven in the south and north appear, and then shall he bequeath the royal power to his son, whose initial letter heads the alphabet. 
when in the halls of Hades the manly king in his own lot shall go. But when the son of this man in the land of Rome shall rule, shown by the number one, there shall be over all the earth great peace, much longed for, and the Latins will love him as king because of his own father's worth. Him, eager to go both east and west, the Roman people shall against his will retain at home and in command of Rome, for among all there is a friendly heart felt for their royal and illustrious lord, but baneful death shall snatch him out of life, short-lived, abandoned to his destiny. But others, afterwards, again shall smite each other, powerful warriors carrying on in evil strife, not holding kingly power, but being tyrants. And in all the world shall they bring many evil things to pass, but chiefly for the Romans till the time of the third Dionysus, until armed with helmet Ares shall from Egypt come, whom they shall surname Dionysus Lord. But when the famous royal purple cloak, a murderous lion and murderous lioness shall rend, together they shall grasp the lungs of the changed kingdom. Then a holy king, whose name has the first letter, pressing hard for victory, shall cast down hostile chiefs to be the food of dogs and birds of prey. Alas for thee, O city burned with fire, O powerful Rome! How many things must thou needs suffer when all these things come to pass? But the great far-famed king shall afterward raise thee all up again with gold and amber and silver and ivory, and in the world thou shalt in thy possessions foremost be, also in temples, marketplaces, wealth, and race grounds, and then shalt thou be again a light for all, even as thou wast before. Ah, wretched Secrepes and Cadmians and the Laconians, who are situate around Peneus and Molossian stream, thick grown with rushes, Trica and Dodona and high-built Ithome, Pyrian ridge around the summit of Olympian Mount, Osa, Larissa, and Highgate Caledon. But when God shall for mortals bring to pass a great sign, day dark twilight round the world, even then to thee, O king, the end shall come, nor is it possible that thou escape a brother's piercing dart against thee hurled. And then again shall rule a life destroyer, a fiery eagle from the royal race, who shall of Egypt's offspring take fast hold, younger, but then his brother much more strong, who has for his first sign the number eighty. And then the whole world shall for honor's sake bear in its lap the soul-distressing wrath of the immortal God. And there shall come on mortal men the creatures of a day, famines and plagues and wars and homicides, and an incessant darkness over the earth, mother of peoples, and relentless wrath from heaven, and disorder of the times, and earthquake shocks, and flaming thunderbolts, and stones and storms of rain and squalid drops, and the high summits of the Phrygian land feel the shock, bases of the Scythian hills feel the shock. Cities tremble, and all earth trembles at the cliffs of the land of Greece. And many cities, God being very wroth, shall fall prone under burning thunderbolts, and with bewailings, and to shun the wrath and make escape is not even possible. And then the king shall by a strong hand fall, struck as if he were no one by his men. After him of the Latins many men wearing the purple mantle on their shoulders shall be again raised up, who shall by lot desire to lay hold on the royal power. And then upon the stately walls of Rome shall be three kings, two having the first number, and one the eponym of victory bearing as no one else. They shall love Rome, and all the world, concerned for mortal men. But they shall not accomplish anything. For God has not been gracious to the world, and neither will he be gentle with mankind, because they have done many evil things. Therefore to kings shall he a mean soul bring, still worse than that of leopards and of wolves, for harshly seizing them with their own hands, like feeble women who are idly slain, shall men in brazen breastplate utterly destroy the kings together with their scepters. Ah, wretched, lofty men of glorious Rome, trusting in false oaths, ye shall be destroyed. And then shall many masters with the spear, men rushing not in order, furious on, take away offspring of the firstborn men in their blood. Therefore thrice shall the Most High then bring on dreadful doom, and all men with their works shall he destroy. 
but into judgment yet again shall God cause them to come that have a shameless soul, as many as determined evil things, and they themselves are fenced in, falling one upon another, and given over there into that condemnation of wickedness. All one by one, yet a brilliant comet, of much to come, of war and battle strife. But at the time when one about the isles shall gather many oracles that speak to strangers of fight and of battle strife and grievous harm of temples, he shall bid one in great haste to gather in Rome's halls for twelve months wheat and barley in abundance, and this most quickly. And in wretched plight the city shall be those days, and straightway shall it again be prosperous not a little, and rest shall be when that rule is destroyed. And then the last race of the Latin kings shall be, and after it again shall grow dominion, children, and the children's race shall be unshaken. For it shall be known, since a surety God himself is king. There is a land dear, nourisher of men, situate in a plain, and round it Nile marks off the boundary and separates all Libya and Ethiopia, and Syrians short-lived, one from one place, another from another. From that land shall snatch away all movable effects. A great and careful lord shall be their king, training up youth and sending off for men, and planning something fearful about those most fearful. Above all, he shall send forth a powerful helper of all Italy, the lofty-minded. And when he shall come unto the dark sea of Assyria, he shall despoil Phoenicians in their homes, and fastening evil war and battle dire, shall be one lord of the two lords of earth. And now will I for Alexandrians sing their grievous end. Alas, barbarians shall possess sacred Egypt, land unharmed, unshaken, when wrath from the gods shall come. Making winter summer, then shall the oracles be all fulfilled. But when three youths in the Olympian games shall conquer, and thou shalt bid them that know the oracles that call on God to cleanse, first by the blood of sucking quadruped, thrice therefore shall the Most High then bring on a fearful lot, and be shall over all brandish the mournful long spear. Then much blood, barbarian, shall be poured out in the dust, when the city shall be plundered utterly by inhospitable strangers. Happy he who is dead, also happy any one who is without a child. For he who once was leader, surnamed for them that are free, far famed in song, no longer in his mind revolving earlier plans, shall place their neck under a servile yoke. Such slavery, cause of much weeping, shall a lord impose. And then straightway an army of Sicilians, ill-fated, shall come, carrying dismay when a barbarian nation shall again come suddenly, and the fruit, when it grows, they from the field shall sever. Upon them shall God the lofty thunderer bestow evil instead of good. Continually shall stranger pluck from stranger hateful gold. But now, when all shall look upon the blood of the flesh-eating lion, and there comes upon the body a murderous lioness, down from his head will be the scepter cast away from him. And as in friendly feast in Egypt, when the people all partake, they perform valiant deeds, and one restrains another, and among them there is much shouting aloud. So also shall there be upon mankind the fear of furious strife, and many shall be utterly destroyed, and others kill each other by hard fights. And then one, covered with dark scales, shall come. Two others shall come acting in concert with one another, and with them a third, a great ram from Syrene, whom before spoke of as a fugitive in war beside the streams of Nile, but in no wise an unsuccessful way do all complete, and then the lengths of the revolving years shall be exceeding quiet. Yet again thereafter shall a second war for them in Egypt be stirred up, and there shall be a battle on the sea, but victory shall not be theirs. Ah, wretched ones, there shall a conquest of the famous city be, and it shall be a spoil of war not long. And then men having common boundaries of much land shall flee wretched, and shall lead their wretched parents. And they shall again having great victory light on a land, and shall destroy the Jews, men staunch in war, wasting by wars far as the hoary deep on both sides, fighting in the foremost ranks for fatherland and parents. And a race of trophy-bearing men shall for the dead be reckoned, 
Ah, how many men shall swim above the waves? For on the sandy beach many shall lie, and their heads of golden hair shall fall beneath Egyptian winged fowls, and then for the Arabians mortal blood shall go in quest. But when wolves shall with dogs pledge in a sea-girt island solemn oaths, then shall there be the raising of a tower, and the city that suffered very many things men shall inhabit. For deceitful gold shall no more be, nor acquiring of the earth, nor much laboring servitude. But one fast friendship, and one mode of life with cheerful soul, and all things shall be common and equal light among the means of life. And wickedness shall sink down from the earth into the vast sea. And then, near at hand, is come the harvest time of mortal men. There is imposed a strong necessity that these things be fulfilled, and at that time there shall not any other traveler say in this conjecturing that the race of men, though imperishable, shall ever cease to be. And then a holy nation shall prevail and hold the sovereignty of all the earth unto all ages with their mighty sons. Fragments of the Sibylline Oracles 1. Ye mortal men and fleshly who are not, how quickly are ye puffed up, seeing not the end of life? Do ye not tremble now and fear God, him who watches over you, the one who is most high, the one who knows, the all-observant witness of all things, all-nourishing creator who has put, all-nourishing creator who in all sweet breath implanted and made God the guide of all, in all things his sweet spirit and has made him leader of all mortals? God is one who rules alone, supremely great, unborn, almighty and invisible, himself alone beholding all things, but not seen as he himself by any mortal flesh. For what flesh is there able to behold with eyes the heavenly and true God divine, who has his habitation in the sky? Not even before the bright rays of the sun can men stand still, men who are mortal born, existing but as veins and flesh on bones. Him who alone is ruler of the world, who alone is forever and has been from everlasting, reverence ye him, the self-existent unbegotten one who rules all things through all time, dealing out unto all mortals in a common light the judgment, and the merited reward of evil counseling shall ye receive, for ceasing the true and eternal God to glorify, and holy hecatombs to offer him, ye made your sacrifice unto the demons that in Hades dwell. And ye in self-conceit and madness walk, and having left the true, straightforward path, ye went away and roamed about through thorns and thistles. O ye foolish mortals, cease roving in darkness and black night obscure, and leave the darkness of night and lay hold upon the light. Lo, he is clear to all and cannot err. Come, do not always chase darkness and gloom. Lo, the sweet-looking light of the sun shines with a surpassing glow. Now, treasuring wisdom in your hearts, know ye that God is one who sends forth rains and winds, earthquakes and lightnings, famines, pestilence, and mournful cares, and storms of snow and ice. But why do I thus speak them, one by one? He guides heaven, rules earth, and over Hades reigns. 2. Now if gods beget offspring and remain immortal, there had been more gods than men, and there had never been sufficient room for mortals to stand. 3. Now if all that is born must also perish, it is not possible for God to be formed from the thighs of man and from a womb. But God alone is one and all supreme, who made heaven and the sun and stars and moon, fruit-bearing earth and billows of the sea, and lofty hills and mouth of lasting springs. He also bringeth forth great multitude of creatures that amid the waters live innumerable, and the creeping things that move upon the earth he sustains with life, and dappled, delicate, shrill twittering birds that ply the air shrill whirring with their wings, and in the glens of mountains wild be placed, the race of beasts, and to us mortals made all cattle subject, and the God formed one, he constituted ruler of all things, and unto man all variegated things made subject, things incomprehensible. For all these things, 
what mortal flesh can know? For he himself alone who made these things at the beginning knows the incorrupt eternal maker, dwelling in the heaven, bringing unto the good, good recompense, much more abundant, but awakening wrath and anger for the evil and unjust, and war and pestilence and tearful woes. O men, why, vainly puffed up, do ye root yourselves out? Be ashamed to deify polecats and monsters. Is it not a craze and frenzy taking sense of mind away, if gods steal plates and carry off earthen pots? Instead of dwelling in the golden heaven in plenty, see them eaten by the moth and woven over with thick spider webs. O oh, fools that bow to serpents, dogs and cats, and reverence birds and creeping beasts of earth, stone images and statues made with hands, and stone heaps by the roads, these ye revere, and also many other idle things which it would even be a shame to tell. These are the baneful gods of senseless men, and from their mouth is deadly poison poured, but of him is life and eternal light imperishable, and he sheds a joy sweeter than honey sweet on righteous men. And to him only do thou bow thy neck, and among pious lives incline thy way. Forsaking all these, in a spirit mad with folly, ye did all drain off the cup of judgment that was filled full, very pure, closely pressed, weighed down, and withal unmixed. And ye will not wake from your drunken sleep, and come to sober reason, and know God to be the King who oversees all things. Therefore on you the flash of gleaming fire is coming. Ye shall be with torches burned, to live long day through an eternal age, at your false, useless idols feeling shame. But they who fear the true eternal God inherit life, and they forever dwell alike in fertile field of paradise, feasting on sweetbread from the starry heaven. 4. Hear me, O men, the King eternal reigns. 5. He only is God, maker uncontrolled. He fixed the pattern of the human form, and did the nature of all mortals mix himself, the generator of all life. 6. Whenever he shall come, a smoky fire shall be in midnight dark. 7. The Erythraean Sibyl, addressing God, says, Why dost thou, O Lord, enjoin on me the necessity of prophesying, and not rather take me aloft from the earth and preserve me unto the most blessed day of thy coming?